Shoddy, she a freak, 10 10 freak. She no one speak, she want beat to the beat. I'm the voice of the sheep, that's a freak in the sheet. She want me for a tea, I got me for your meat. I am mad. Shoddy, she not bad, man. Like people go in, like there's one for the singles yeah. and then there's one for the families, yeah? yeah. But I feel like everybody just keeps leaving. Like every yeah. episode they're like, I had to go home. I had to go. Yeah. And I'm literally like, who's here? Like they, somebody's <laughs> nanny came in and I was literally like, What's going on? No, Do you know the, what li- I mean? the lifestyle and he's like characters. Yeah. Yeah. The lifestyle was so crazy. I remember watching it when I was in secondary school. Mm. I should not have been watching it. But no. anyways. Same. What it was it was breakfast, daytime activity, get ready to go to the club, meet someone in the club. Come back, research, na- research, <laughs> research like crazy. Everyone's just researching anyhow with sound effects. Next morning, regret decision. Do it again. <laughs> Do it again, literally. literally. And all the alcohol they were drinking. I Gosh. know. Like, there's Jersey Shore, but I raise you one better. Anybody remember Bad Girls Club? No. What I want, yeah, yeah I get it. it. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I said. Bad Girls Club. Let me tell you about Bad Girls Club. They basically this whole entire concept of the show. Was they would gather like 12, 16 bitches in the house mm-hmm. who were like bad girls. Yeah. So they had like a bad reputation, whatever. And they basically would spend like a whole season fighting. Beef, have you guys never Same seen thing. that meme? I that? didn't get no sleep because of yeah, y'all. Yeah, those were all that from Bad Girls Club. Club. Oh Gosh. my God, Bad Girls Club was the OG. It was so degrading. So it was so bad. Was I would think I was like the type to watch on MTV, watch stuff like The Bachelor, Catfish. Like, I, I was, love no, The Bachelor. I never MTV watched it. Cribs. The Bachelor and The Bachelor. And my Sweet 16, that's it's, what I was, it was like. It was mad weird. The Jersey Shore as well. Yeah. Bachelor was so weird. Like what, one girl dating like, 30 guys and uh, then vice versa as well is that not what today's like, dating scene looks like <laughs> 30 guys at the same time and like they all live in a house together Crazy. so they all know what's going on like that's weird is there well, research no. yeah but the, what the, the fantasy really, suites like, it, it wasn't really that girl deep, what do you think what's going on in those fantasy suites i know what you mean but, but like i don't know i feel like that's i wish every girl had that option though <laughs> I love right? that. Seriously, yeah. if you could just go we to a villa it. for like two week holiday, thirty man them and you that's and you crazy. get to like choose date everybody and choose that's your crazy. dream man. If you could set up an organization that did that as a business. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna be on it. It's gonna be very exclusive here, eh? I'm gonna patent that real quick because somebody's gonna take that. <laughs> GTG <laughs> Oh my god, we should do that during the summer. Find you a man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We should do that. We, we should, should do that on our first live show. Right? Oh, God, can we see, like, a blind date? Are you single? Thing. Hungry? Yeah. Desperate? <laughs> <laughs> In need of a holiday? <laughs> <laughs> oh, too many, too many people will be going on that. Just, like, say, holiday. I am screaming. <laughs> Literally, um, but I think we could definitely do it. Do you know what else? Do you know what other TV mm-hmm. show? Oh, Pimp yeah. My Ride. Right. Oh, that thing. Why is there a hot tub in my car? <laughs> do you not see a lot of people came out and were complaining that their cars were actually destroyed? Of after, course. Like, damp, really? mold. <laughs> Oh no! Of course. How do you think? How do you think like a <laughs> cotton candy machine is gonna be working in your boot? Honestly, oh my like gosh. that was always my dream. I'd love a car yeah. for mm-hmm. my ride. Yeah. I always loved it. <laughs> and Sweet Sixteen, my super Sweet Sixteen. But did you yeah. ever see Sweet Sixteen Exiled? So it was all these like 16 year olds who were given everything in life. Mm-hmm. And then they used to like go abroad, like to like uh, underdeveloped countries yep. and they'd have to yeah. just rough it. And yep. they were literally like, oh my God, like I actually <laughs> have to do cleaning. Like it's like, <laughs> whoa. The one where like bad behaved, like British kids were sent to like mm, Jamaica. Something like yeah. that. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Did you ever watch like Mum Swap? Oh, oh my god, yeah. Wife swap? Wife swap. Wife oh. swap. Oh. Or the granny that, like, the woman that comes and takes Super your nanny. Super, Super nanny. Super nanny. I was yeah. on that. I watched like, too much TV as a kid, obviously. Um, TV was good, sir. No, wife swap, wife swap was mad. That, that was crazy. Yeah. There's a racist one. Like, I remember, because, like, I think dude, I remember guys, are you not on this type of side of TikTok? Yeah, yeah that's how I see it. I'm, I'm always rewatching it. Two hours in, like, <laughs> part 256, I'm yeah. still like... <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, why stop? It's like, these people, they just they just don't like black people. Mm-hmm. And it's like a black family, they get swapped with, and they're literally just like, yeah, we don't like do that it. That like, but that's it, that's what that's what TV does. Like, mm-hmm. it's just all, like... Good TV, man. You know yeah. what? They're, they're working a killer on camera. But it's your opportunity to get back at the racist, though. That's when you start cooking with better like, <laughs> oh, gosh. With chili, chili, but I think that was one it. of the issues they had. They didn't like how often she was cooking and like mm. the fact she wanted them to have home cooked meals. Yeah, yeah. The mm. they, they just want a McDonald's fish fingers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's America. Uh, <laughs> what do intro. you think? Okay. So guys, welcome back to GTG, baby. You know the your weekly, weekly subscription, subscription to the, the gym. gym. 
I don't feel hearing me say that live. I know, I love hearing it live. Because <laughs> uh, so, I'm actually used to hearing it on the, the audio yeah. and it's cuter in person. So guys, <laughs> I have my best friend Ooh. on the pod. Yep. And she also happens to be a gynecologist. Yep. So this is a whole ass doctor. Yep. I'm super Ooh. proud. <laughs> I would say your last name for legal purposes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Dr. Thank Dr. You. Naomi is class. Keep my yeah. government details out of this. So you're <laughs> actually a doctor? Like Yeah, actually. Yeah. And but the thing is that like the phrase doctor is a very wide spectrum of yeah. things. So I'd say I'm a medical doctor. Mm. Yeah. Hey guys, GCG has partnered up with Encino to give you 20% off. You cannot miss this one. You got gifted these sets. I'm in cappuccino, the girls are in black. This is a 10 out of 10 fit. You just feel snatched. Yeah. It's just a vibe, to be honest. Literally. And it's not just for the girls, but it's for the guys too. So if you're trying to look like your money comes in and not out, y'all better get you some MC now. Be more specific, but yeah. She can do a PhD. She, wait, it's, it's yeah, because if you do a PhD, you're also a doctor. doctor yeah. If you yeah, do doctor. like dentistry, you're also a doctor. Mm -hmm. Like there's tons of different ways, but I just, I somehow ended up going to medical school. Mm -hmm. Also, if you role play, you can be a doctor. Oh, you could. <laughs> okay. Doctors are nurses. I, 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 it, I, I like <laughs> that. I like that. I hear it. That's um, exactly. No, we have to be um, open. Yes. You know what I mean? This is, this, yeah. is a fr this is going to be one crazy An pod. Inclusive podcast we are. Very detailed. Yeah, we don't kink shame. Yeah. No, 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 we don't do men, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. but you guys can keep listening. That's grand. Maybe mm. you might I, secretly have a vagina. I asked, I asked, I asked my babes. I was like, damn, like I was like, oh, we're getting a gynecologist on. Like, like, is there anything you want to know? Do you want to ask me any questions? <laughs> and he literally turned around and he goes, yeah. Can you ask her where the off button is? I was like, that is a great question. I said, what? Damn. And he, he was like, yeah, how'd you take the batteries the out? Off button, grab your girl, lift her arm under the armpit. No, just joking, there's no off button. I did. There's actually no off button. You just have to Wait, deal with it for the rest of your ask, life. What is the doctor called for men? Since the one for women is called a gynecologist, I actually don't know that. Well, it, that's interesting because men don't technically have their own type of doctor, but there is a doctor called a urologist. Oh, and the they Euro usually operate on penises right but they also uh, do kidneys and stuff who is they it do kidneys catherine and fox yeah and Grey's Anatomy. Anatomy. yeah Sorry. exactly Just that's okay baby <laughs> which was catherine fox i need to google she's that she's avery's mom oh was yeah. she a urologist she was a bad bitch yeah, yeah. she's a urologist she's still a bad b yeah definitely yeah she's still going she's still in the season I, season 20 right i with gray's Anatomy lost me season 12. sorry how when fake. christina left really how Done. fake is that show fake as fuck oh <laughs> Um, <laughs> to be honest, I feel like once you do medicine, you can't really enjoy any shows about <coughs> hospitals anymore. Mm. You just can't because you're just watching it and you're like, this is such bullshit. Mm. Like sometimes people will walk into a room and they'll just say as many medical sounding words as they can in a Which row. Which of epi. That doesn't even make any sense <laughs> at all. They're just like, yeah, ibuprofen, paracetamol. <laughs> Literally. Blood pressure. I feel like sometimes I hear like medical names that like I make at work and I'd be yeah. like, oh, that sounds familiar. That's real. Yeah, like but, some some of them can be quite accurate. Like I don't know, the other day I was watching an episode of like Law and Order SVU, and it was actually like a medical episode. Mm. It was actually kind of good, but usually it's trash. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So just of the week, mm -hmm. first one is Love Is Blind. So I, I've I've watched a couple of episodes. I watched it until like everyone kind of got married and they're in a different in a different country and stuff like that. So obviously Megan Fox and the blonde guy, <laughs> um, <clears throat> Megan she <laughs> she kind of annoyed me from the jump. She's right crazy. because like she is mad insecure so what really annoyed me was she chose that guy to fulfill her ego because obviously he she knew that a, 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 another pretty girl was obviously into him right so obviously she didn't need to go back and like tell the girls and all that stuff that this was crying why is she crying she was crying why too she much always crying? but yeah she's mad insecure and like obviously that's why she chose the guy anyways i feel like the other guy would have been so much but i forgot his name he looked like Trevor. A, yeah he looked like he he that wasn't yeah. Megan Fox. I thought Megan Fox was Chelsea. Is that not Megan yeah. Fox? That, that's yeah. who she is. Yeah, that's, that's what she's talking about. Megan Fox, yeah, Megan Chelsea, Fox yeah. Chelsea, but yeah. she's not with Trevor. 
Is she? she no, no, she's she saying blonde. Trevor suited her better. Oh, yeah. okay, I don't yeah, even yeah, know yeah. the name of the guy. The name, she that's compared what... herself to Trevor to Megan, Megan Fox. Fox. Yeah. And yeah. that was the design and vote for him. We all could see it. Yeah. Mm. Because he was always on the fence because the other lady had a child and all of that kind of yeah. stuff. So he was kind of like, yeah, I'm not really ready for that kind of like commitment, commitment. Mm. Which I hear because according Fair. to these pods, apparently you know these people for a week. Mm. You know, proposing to someone who's got a kid that's when you don't a week. A week. A week. Yeah. That's crazy. There's yeah. no way I'm getting out on money after knowing somebody for like a full week. No. But at the same time, if you don't propose, then you don't get to stay on the show. Mm. Yeah, to Like, if you want to make it to the end of the season, you need to get in a couple. At what expense? Yeah. I, I feel <laughs> right? like... Right? You're speaking about your key. <laughs> I, I, feel like, I feel like that's what Clay's doing. Because oh, yeah, he's, he's not into AD. 100%. No. But then, he's 100% at the same time, into like, AD. AD, she's fire, but she's yeah. also toxic as hell. Ooh, yes. Is yeah. she go in? She, I mean, she is just like, she loves the attention. Mm. Because, I mean, why entertain Matthew for that long? Matthew's right. a borderline psychopath. Right. Mm. Matthew? He, he freak America is watching. Yeah, America is watching. Are they? Are, is America in, you know in where the room he with us be. now? Mm -hmm. Was when he got up and he walked out while that girl was talking. <laughs> I was like, nah, nah, nah. This guy cannot he be like, real. Yeah, this guy chat too much. Yeah. <laughs> he, can't be real. He, get, he walks in and goes, I have a couple of questions from 1 to 20. Pick a question. <laughs> but I'm not going to answer those questions. They're only for you. Yeah, I don't want to talk. I, I feel very reserved. Like, what are you doing here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting there reading the book all the time. And then AD just happens to be the girl that he just opens his heart to. It's and because I'm like, I think she, that's what I mean by she loves attention. The fact mm. that she entertained him for so long, even when you could tell that she was so done with him. Yeah. I think with Clay, it's just attention as well. But she mm. also wants attention from like everybody. Mm. You could tell that mm. from the scene when they were outside and they were all talking about her ass. Mm. And she stood there, she started like whining and like throwing it up. This is when Mega Fox got insecure and pissed off with her man because her man was like, AD has a shelf. Mm -hmm. And she calls it Anne. I was like, I don't know what in the reverse psychology Megan Fox was doing. <laughs> but it's like, you you knew you were insecure and then you're still standing there, you're gassing the girl and then you get pissed off that he mentioned it but you were the one who told her. Red flag number one. Right. Indy, yeah. you're with your fiancé. Why are you... Sh clapping your cheeks in front of everybody. There Sheesh. was no music. Yeah. I can understand if it was Cancun. <laughs> no mm. You know, if everyone's in Cancun yeah, and the music yeah, yeah. is up, I can get it. You're yeah. in the moment. But I was like, what it's were you trying to achieve? America there? is watching. Yeah. America <laughs> is watching. Matthew is watching. Yeah. And AD is going to be so pissed off at the conversation she had with, not AD, Clay, is going to be pissed off at mm -hmm. AD when he sees that conversation play out where she's talking to the guy that's going out with Megan Fox. I can't mm. remember his name. Who? Jimmy, thank you, yeah. production. You know, go on, do yeah, it. Yeah. Do you like Love is Blind? We love this. If you like, have opinions, feel free to share. Yeah, I love that because, like, I was telling the girls, I couldn't watch Love is Blind until I got my period, and I just feel like coming, being in an emotional state, mm. it hits different. Right? Yeah, you know? it, it hits but different. This, this season is not tugging on my that heartstrings. Latina, the, that Latina girl and that white boy almost had me in tears. Mm. They're the, the only day. ones. I'm. I'm. Oh my god. I could bet they're the only she ones. She was talking married. about like her disabled little brother yeah. and how like I was like. Wait, <laughs> I've watched yeah. this show, but who was that? What's the name? Uh, do you know what? Let me go find the him. David, so do you know? The, the names are so tough. I don't know. Um, the one who has the disabled brother? Everybody gets a nickname. She's Latina. She's Latina. Girl. Oh, There's and they got boy. blonde, and he doesn't want yeah. kids. No, no kids. He wants yeah. no kids. That man made no, it No, I think fit. he said no kids yet. No kids yet, but he was on it. Mm, like, yeah. questioning a vasectomy and everything because you don't want kids just yet. But Royals. later on, he says that he didn't realize how permanent a vasectomy was. He thought yeah. it was something that you could just tie and well, then... No, but... Well, you just tie this ball sack that's together. That's what he thought. <laughs> <laughs> in a bow. In yeah, a bow. In a bow. And then scissors cut the rope. No, that's literally what he thought. He <laughs> said he was like... Go forth and prosper. Because he sits down and has a conversation with her later on, basically saying that, okay, I think it's better you go on birth control. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like, do you know what I love about him? He's financially stable. Mm. The fact that he just sold his house and he's willing to get like a house with her mm. yeah. instead of her having to move. And I was like, I like the things that he's doing. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty convinced they're the only ones that'll get married this season. Yeah. Yeah. I think for what sure. about mess? Jeremy? Did Jeremy you? with the other girl and the fact he lied. No, Wait, that, yeah, yeah. The one who lied. he was out till 5 a.m. Oh, yeah, she, she called 5 a.m. Mm. Guys, mm. did you see the TikTok on where they explained it? So basically mm. he gave, I can't remember her name. Um, uh, Sarah Ann is the girl that he was with. Yeah, mm -hmm. is it like Tracy or something? Is it Tracy? I think Who it is, is it, David? Tracy. Jeremy. You know the one that she is. Sarah and Laura. I, I think it's like, is it Laura? Could be Sa no, Sarah Ann is the yeah, one. 
Yeah. Yeah. Really. What's the name of the blonde lady? Oh, her the name is Laura. 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 So yeah. Laura, Laura tricked him. Here. She did some, you know, reverse psychology on him. So he gave Laura his um, find my iPhone and was like, you can check where I am all night. So he left his phone in the car, but didn't realize he was wearing his Apple Watch. Mm. So the Apple Watch was updating that he was in Sarah Ann's house. So that's how she knew. That's why he lied saying I was in the parking lot. She was like, no, you weren't. Mm. See, see the way Ooh. Apple's just tracking everybody's move. Oh, you want to cheat, don't wear your Apple Watch. <laughs> but, yeah. No Apple did, devices. Did you see? I actually really rated AD the way she spoke to that Sarah Ann girl. Like she just called her out because like this girl is basically saying like, how can you know after two people have got engaged, mm -hmm. then still DM or like like text a man to be like, oh if the door is open. Do you know what I mean? Like you're clearly mm -hmm. not respecting boundaries. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And fair enough. Like if a man's gonna cheat, he's gonna cheat anyways. But mm -hmm. don't like like it's actually just it's not actually to do with him. It's just disrespectful to do it to another woman. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Do you know I hear it? She's not a girl's girl. But I think in that sort of situation, I'd be pissed off if that was me number mm -hmm. one. So I can't believe I'm even saying this. But the fact that <laughs> <laughs> the fact they are only dating for a week, I'm sure she's thinking in her mind that she's like, I need to shoot my shot. Right. Yes, it was bad. Mm. I definitely think it's not a girl's girl thing. Mm. But she also doesn't owe that girl anything. But they, they he knew chose each other someone else. But he chose someone else. But Do you he, get me? Like he knew f he, they knew each other for a week. But even if they mm. knew each other for a week, they all knew each other for the exact same amount of time. He still chose someone else. He didn't choose you. Right. So it's like, um. why are you like, why are you gonna? Why are you so thirsty? Yeah. Why are you so thirsty? Ego thing, Dana. That's definitely. It. It's, it's like, oh, ego. he chose you, but I'm gonna, I can take him whenever I want. Right. Yeah. Like, know? see, it's just and your intention. Yeah, but he's not that smart. No. What do you guys think of the interracial couple? Apparently, people are saying he's um gay. I was going to think of a better term, the, but thank you. The <laughs> principal. <laughs> yeah. The big guy with the dreadlocks. Can it? Yeah. Can it? I uh, know that girl. He wasn't she giving was me gay very, was He was very insecure. Vibe. He, yeah. she, she, she is. She was very insecure. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't think she yeah. was I don't know. I, just, I got from their conversation that there was no real like I think it chemistry. fizzled out very quickly. Because it, it kind of like mm. they were having like deep chats, but like you can have deep chats with your friend. Mm. Like at the end of the day, do you want to suck that, that person's nipples or nah? Mm. Yeah. Mm. You, need, you need to she be attracted to them. I yeah, no, lines. no, but like I think as well, like no, because she remember she kept asking for attention, yeah. like, and he just wasn't giving it to her. But I think that's I mean? because he was literally like this the whole time. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like, and even you can even see like when she was breaking down, he didn't care. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he just kind of like dusted it off, and I was like, yeah, that's he's just wild. very nonchalant. I think he came friends. off very different. In the very, part, didn't he? Yeah. yeah, he seemed very cold. Down to earth. And the Apparently, parts, his cousin's but... the one that exposed him. For his being, cousin. Like, yes, that's what I heard online. It always uh, be allegedly, people, you know. Yeah. Damn. Because he wasn't giving me those vibes. No. It just kind of gave me that, like, he kind of, like, fizzled out. Like, mm. he just wasn't So as what exactly it. was his cousin saying online? I don't know. I heard someone has said that his cousin exposed him for being... Wow. That Shout was the word. Yeah. Cousin. There was somebody who... Jeez. I saw, like, a TikTok as well where someone was like, you can't tell me that he's not gay. Like, yeah, he is. And I was like... Damn. I was like, do you know this man? People <laughs> spread rumors online, though. Like, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I was talking about it online the other day. Like, everybody had convinced that Sierra was a man. Sierra. For years. Do you remember, oh do you remember that rumor back God. in school? The Sierra was a man. <laughs> Yes, I just started online somewhere and like propagated for years. Yeah, I never thought like even me as a small child. Cause that's when I when that's when the rumor was going around. I just thought she just had a little bit of a more masculine kind of body she shape. Skinny. She can't be masculine. To, she was just huh? skinny and yeah, she was in her masculine. tomboy era. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that was my favorite Sierra era. Oh my god, mm. what? Oh, me and her. Do you see <laughs> the promo, the PR. Oh my, my goodies. goodies. My, oh my god. Do you see the PR behind the couple though? Everyone's like, we not we know why she's pregnant every year, because of the way Russell looks at her. Love that for them though. Oh yeah, you can tell that man loves her. Apparently, another just of the week that um, vapes are reducing sperm count. They did research. Damn. Yeah, they did research on it. Vapes Why are, are so many bitches still getting pregnant? I, 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 <laughs> I'm not, see, I'm not seeing it. Truth. It's not reflecting in the hospitals. But it did, <laughs> yeah, still birthing like the Hebrew. We can, here in the <laughs> we can assume that the men they are researching aren't vapors. It's more the young crowds. So it's oh. gonna affect future generations of. So you know, the the planet is overpopulated, anyways. Mm. You know, and some of these children nowadays they don't need to be reproducing. You know, right? <laughs> they don't they don't need. Well, I mean, our generation has the lowest birth rate, like ever. Really? So I mean, we're having really? the least amount of children, like of any generation. Have you before. seen the economic climate? Every other day, I'm seeing, I'm seeing like posts. 
expecting mm. July 2024. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I Every think, single day is really? a new one popping no, up. I think last year was bigger than this year for me. I've only kind of like seen maybe one or two this year. Mm. Oh, last year, I saw so many. I think what's the population in Ireland is going up in general. So there's mm -hmm. more babies, but like individual couples are having less children than they yeah. were having in the past. Mm. Uh, yeah. And women are waiting longer now to have kids, of course. Like, I mean, the other day, we, I mean, we have like 48 year old women having mm. babies really Whoa. like it's their first straight up their first baby at like 48 years old wow Jesus. love that wow. for them though that last egg is just managing <laughs> <laughs> holding on right. seriously That's oh my crazy. god it's a blessing for them you know yeah there's also always it's beautiful IDF. yeah oh. another just of the week is wendy williams i obviously saw a clip of her on twitter Oof. and you know she, she's she's beautiful but obviously she is going through um things and yeah. it's just so crazy how like someone that used to be like so prominent you know in the industry on social media she used to be that girl and she didn't really care what, and then all of a sudden ross Clark. i know ross you were telling me a bit about her background in regards to like her husband cheating on her excessively he had a whole like whole secret family family on her and like they had a house that's too regular like that's too regular in America, mm. like it, it was crazy. And in Nigeria, like I think she was someone who always kind of like suffered from stuff. Like she has Graves' disease. That's why her eyes are so like mm. out and there. I, yeah, and then she also has lymphedema. Mm. That's why she stopped wearing heels and started wearing like trainers and stuff. But like, um, she also now has wait. I googled this because I don't know what it is. Aphasia. Aphasia and yeah. dementia now yeah mm. aphasia is like a symptom of dementia but what i was hearing is that she basically had like alcohol induced dementia so yes. I'm not going to get into it too much but when you basically drink for like years and years and years for like a really really long time you become deficient of a certain vitamin called thiamine and that is like really important for like your brain function mm -hmm. so after years of being deficient in this you basically develop a type of dementia and the people that have alcohol induced dementia can develop it really early in their mm. life so like but with dementia, once it starts, you're kind of, you're yeah. kind of, you, you, you can't, can't like cure it oh. necessarily. Um, is it, oh, is it possible like you can forget how to breathe or something like that? It gets to that point could, like, or is it, cause that's what I've heard. Like aphasia is kind of like forgetting like how to say certain things. Like you mm. can, you can forget some people's names, even mm. people that are really close to you. You can see their face, you know exactly who they are, but mm -hmm. you don't know their name. Mm. and obviously there's the memory side of it and everything it's a really sad condition mm. i'm just sad wendy williams yeah. went down like that like yeah. she needed some karma because she mm. did some bitchy shit but mm. not dementia though no yeah i was no. gonna say people have been coming for her hard on the internet and i think it's kind of sad right? Right. it's very unnecessary because yeah. like the clip that i saw of her with like black china it's like her last memory is her still being married like black china called her she was yeah. like oh do you know your name she was like you're wendy williams and she was like no i'm wendy hunter like the fact that that is her last memory the betrayal mm. of her husband yeah. is crazy but that's probably what sent her down the path of like that's probably what she wants to yeah. remember to be honest yeah. because trying to remember everything else that went it's too hard mm. yeah so like as much as it's probably it's horrible for us to see it's probably what's making her happy Mm -hmm. That's all that really matters. I was like that documentary was messed up. Did anybody see clips from that documentary? I saw the clips. No. Yeah, there was this clip where she was laid up in the bed, like, and her manager is coming over to her with like a Ciroc bottle or something. I'm like, what yeah, is that? I think oh, they're exploiting it to make the documentary because apparently mm. her son was given power of attorney, then it got taken off of him by the producers Damn. and like people that she worked with. So he was trying to like keep her away and mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. But I think I don't know what she signed to, mm. but that's how they released a documentary without her son. Because concerned. like no one's gonna want to see their mom like that. Mm, like I'm sure, that's and that's her only child as well. Right. Yeah. And it's tricky with Wendy because yeah, she's a businesswoman, but like her business is her. Mm, she is yeah, the brand. She's the brand. Yeah. So like if she's not present, then she's not making money. Right. Her brand is not her. Her agency. Nobody's bringing any income. Mm. So like, I guess they have the push to put her out there. But right. That's so sad right. though. Like it's yeah. it's really sad. It's Twitter is very crazy because how could someone say? Although she has um, dementia, she still remembered him, like the husband being broke or something. Yeah, because I think when she was going through the divorce, he tried to he, <laughs> no, he tried to sue her. He tried to, sue, to like take half her money. How can you forget poverty? <laughs> <laughs> can you forget? Please, that's you why Twitter is not a safe ever. place. Like obviously, obviously, no, not discrediting what she's going through, but that's that's imagine like that's the first time I saw Wendy Williams after years, mm -hmm. and that's what Twitter was saying. Twitter is a world. Twitter is crazy. That is actually Twitter is actually. <laughs> <laughs> I remember too. 
<laughs> Most called up. So we have some questions for our, our special gynecologist today. Yeah. So the first one was, what was it? Sorry, there's lots going on here. I have it. I have it. Okay. Should we trust male gynecologists? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was going to be like, of course. I mean, like, not. Netflix has recently put out some weird documentaries and stuff. I don't know if you guys have mm-hmm. seen this one, like, what's it called? Like, Our Father or something like that. It's about like a male gynecologist that mm-hmm. was like basically inseminating women with his own sperm. I read about that. Yeah, and he basically had like that 200 crazy. children in the town, <laughs> in that little part of like America. And his whole thing was like religious, and he was like, he wanted to repopulate the earth with white people. So he would only oh inseminate like his white patients. Anyway, yeah, you can trust me, God. <laughs> she goes, please, I'm about to vomit. She goes, disclaimer, <laughs> but you can trust male gynecologists. <laughs> That's wild, bro. That's crazy. That's wild. Yeah. I have, can I, can, can I have a question? Go on, baby. Why is gyne- gynecology, like, see the way, like, in America, yes. there's always, like, everyone, like, everybody has a gyno. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But in Ireland, it's not really there's like two. that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Why is that? I don't think everybody needs a gynecologist, generally, okay. because I don't think that everybody needs to have a doctor they go to. Like, I mean, like in Ireland, we have the cervical screening. Okay. You know, so like, for example, over the age of 25, every three years, you get a letter in the mail. You can just book a free smear test. The Irish government organizes that for you in America. Okay. That doesn't happen. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's so why unless you have a gynecologist, you're not going to have a cervical smear. So like it's a bit more of an incentive for people to have their own one because mm-hmm. it's more private over there. But like, I feel like generally Ireland really takes care of women mm-hmm. overall compared to other countries. I right. mean, Ireland is one of the only countries in the world where contraception is absolutely free mm. to any woman under the age of 26. A little 31 louder. now. Thir- they've raised it 31 for certain types of contraception, like the marina coil and certain things like that. But <laughs> They're really saying no kids. <laughs> no <laughs> kids. Ireland is overpopulated. Yeah. <laughs> like this cost of living crisis. Yeah. 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 Harry Bella in 2024. You meant it. Yeah. You wanted it. Because it's free. No, but yeah. this is what I mean. That like a lot of people don't know that Ireland, I, I think overall, actually really takes care of women. Mm. But not every woman needs a gynecologist. Mm. Okay. Please, my job is hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay at home. <laughs> Let's call them... Um, do you mind just pushing the mic a bit? Because I want everyone to hear what you're saying. No, you know what I'm saying. Look, I'm gonna, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna just push this forward. Thank you. It's okay, I can break my leg for that. Right. Another question: Can you make twins scientifically, maybe through IVF? That's not a good question. Yet. Right there. That's not really yet. interesting, though. Mm-hmm. But not yet. Twins have to happen spontaneously. I feel um, like people think that like celebrities do because like mm. Mariah Carey, J Lo. It's more Beyonce, likely with IVF. It is more likely with IVF. Twins, because basically, yeah, and triplets. because there's Ooh. different types of twins. Mm-hmm. You have twins that are like two separate embryos that mm-hmm. just grew in the womb at the same time. Returnal. Then you have one where you have one embryo that splits into two and identical. it makes identical twins. Mm-hmm. So when you have IVF, they obviously do the insemination, mm-hmm. which is basically egg, sperm. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> research, <laughs> research. Mm-hmm. so they basically create an embryo and then they basically put the embryos inside of your womb mm. now obviously they want to increase the chances of one embryo actually sticking mm-hmm. inside of your womb so they don't just do one because that, that, if that doesn't stick then fuck it come mm. back next week babe like they'll probably <laughs> hit you with like three or four yeah poop, 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 pop, so pop, you pop. might be lucky or unlucky depending mm-hmm. on the patient where two or three might stick mm-hmm. instead of just one mm-hmm. um in situations like that sometimes we even do selective termination where if three stick, we'll just get rid of two. Mm. Not to say get rid of, but you know, like, yeah, yeah, for you sure. You basically, the woman doesn't want to carry a triplet pregnancy. Mm-hmm. She just wanted a child. Just one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know God fair. bless me with three, but God, I can only handle I one know, right I now. I, I would love twins. Just I would love twins. twins yeah. No, but if a man was to put triplet to me, I'd be so vexed. <laughs> I'd be so upset. Wait, so yeah. why is twins? Like, why? What's the difference between twins yeah. and three? That extra one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if you carry triplets for a guy, will you ever accept any type of attitude or nonsense? No, Never. I'm so not entitled. Even after one. Yeah. Like, like, you know obviously, I mean? twins, like, it's because obviously I actually raised twins. My mom thought she did, but no, I did. <laughs> she had the twins and said, here. Yeah. At one point, like, we're actually sharing bunk beds. <laughs> we took one, eat, like, I raised, if you saw the twins, like, they walked into his room, you'd be like, nah, these dem- dem- these kids. Yeah. <laughs> they even look like me. It's just ha- half and half. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, sorry, that's, that sounded personal. Hey, but <laughs> twins, that. like, I guys, honestly, yeah, in this cost of living tw- crisis. Twins. <laughs> twins. I'm with you on that, babe. To, like, if I had twins, take out my ovaries you know now. Sixteen euro for SMA, yeah. <laughs> Sixteen euro for baby baby formula. Uh-huh. Thirty two euro a week that you're spending, if not more. 
so sad. 32 years. Let's, let's not forget nappies. the nappies. Yeah. Mm. And the wipes. wipes. Mm-hmm. Nappy bags. It's Have you seen how much here. baby bottles cost? Baby sterilizer. Uh, sterilizer. Get the yeah. yeah, yeah. It's oh, hard because, speak. like, I mean, even from our perspective, we have women come in in labor with nothing but the clothes on their back. Damn. Like, and they're coming from a homeless shelter. They're coming from an asylum seekers hostel. They're coming from where the hell ever they're coming from, and they have their baby. And the midwives are great. They'll stock up some baby bottles, some nappies, whatever, and give it to her when she's discharged. But you don't know what, like. If she has access to any of these things, considering how bloody expensive they are right now, mm. it's crazy. Like yeah, if you have so like sad. a kid that's lactose intolerant, go see what the formula is for a lactose that's intolerant a kid. Wild. Well, well, that's wild. That's what I say. If I had Colin? twins, cut the ovaries. Damn. Yeah. Not risking it again. What? Really? Cut those ovaries. Yeah. Two is enough. My dad's brother had three sets of twins. Oh. Yeah. He had twin girls. Three sets of twins is crazy. Then twin boys. And then his last set of twins, only one of them survived. But oh. he has five kids now. But three sets of twins in a row. Remember in secondary school, <laughs> we had those triplets who their older sisters were twins. Yeah. So it's more likely if you come from twins to have twins. The country in the world with the highest incidence of twins is Nigeria. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Oh, one yeah. in 20 pregnancies is a twin pregnancy in Nigeria. I hope I'm oh, one of enjoy. them. Enjoy, enjoy, guys. No. I will. You enjoy. No, I'm actually very optimistic yeah. no. when it comes to kids. Like I, I do want them so bad. Yeah, I want them just, just not, just not now. So how would you get up to the like the the six of them at a time, like uh, four, six, and the six sex toplets, octoplets? Those rarely happen naturally. The most common reason is something we call ovarian hyperstimulation. And forget you don't have to remember that. Basically. Some certain women have ovaries that release like ten eggs every month <laughs> instead of one. Mm. That ovaries just work in double time over time. <laughs> club next club. <laughs> yeah, club. club next, next club. Another one. <laughs> Another one. You know exactly. So, and there's certain medication that we can give them. Like if a woman is trying to get pregnant and her like ovaries aren't really working, they, we give her medication to stimulate the ovaries, mm-hmm. and so she releases a shit ton of eggs. And mm. if her partner swimmers are swimming, mm. there you go. Damn. Twin mm-hmm. Man. And a teaspoon of semen could like fill up a country. What do you do with a teaspoon of semen? No, I was just saying a random fact. Don't worry, I'm not out here taking semen like cough syrup. Yeah. Like that what? doctor in that state. <laughs> oh, God forbid, but think. It's true, but like one, like five mil of semen can contain about like five what is, million sperm what is five, cells. What is five, what's five mil? Five averaging? milliliters. Five mil, that's, five mil, that's, that's like, like a, a that's like a little cough. So are you saying, <laughs> look into the camera, <laughs> <laughs> that the pullout gay? Okay, what? Is bullshit. Is bullshit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> Sorry. You, you don't know. Me. You, you don't know how strongly me and her You have triggered me so hard. <laughs> Anytime I hear a girl open her mouth, I like, I people fully, I'll be in work, I'll be like, well, so what's your form of contraception? Oh, like the pullout. But can, I, can I pause you there? It's not her fault. This nick <laughs> has convinced you, because you know when niggas yeah. say, they say it's so whimsical. I got it, they I got say, it. like, you know, genie, you can tell a wish. They feel like, yeah, let's pull up game, it's calm. Like, don't worry, like, it's calm. My, t- my thing, my thing, like, it's fresh. Like, don't worry about it. Don't go. So obviously, <laughs> she's obviously, like, now, she's now, like, regurgitating what she's heard. Some of these Literally. guys think they're Jedi masters or something, because they really think that they can just hold it in. They have full control. I know a lot of pregnant women that were that were working with the pullout game. I can tell you that. For <laughs> pull and pray. <laughs> pull and pray for free. <laughs> pull and pray as can be right after. Scary. Scary um, stuff. No. Um, I would definitely advise an actual form of contraception if right. you're having unprotected sexual intercourse, which is risky mm-hmm. in 2024. What mm-hmm. do you think is the best contraception for young women? I think that the biggest issue that I see with young women is compliance. Nobody mm. wants to take a tablet every day. You're not 65. Mm, yeah. You want to wake up and have a whole chuck of tablets that you have to drink. Like, right. Nobody yeah. wants to do that. So you need a form of contraception that is working even when you don't think about it. Right. And I think that intrauterine devices are great because you, yeah, it's painful to get in, but you're doing that once every six years. Mm. And then it's just in and the it's IUD. just working. Yeah. And mm. you just don't have to think about it until six years later when maybe then you want to have kids, you know? Right. And you can always take it out as yeah, well. Yeah, mm. you can always take it out. So I think that people are like, and a lot of people have like, oh, I don't want to get on contraception because I'm going to gain weight or, oh my God, I'm going to be moody. I'm mm. going to be this. You're like, going to be all those babe, things when you're, you're pregnant. pregnant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like that anyways. Mm. You're going to be like that 100%. <laughs> Plus, pass this phone to Naomi because I don't know how to spend that, spell that word. But see, it might not be gynecologist related but this is what someone asked as you like what you're hearing seeing if you do make sure to like comment share subscribe and follow each asked asked 
If you your village people choose, <laughs> because I can't, I can't yeah, for you. Is, like, what's yeah. that? That is crazy. I, I said, what is that? Is that an evil word? I don't, even, I don't know. I don't it looks like it was an evil word. Being incompetent or something like that. Um, quick break from the pussy talk. Um, what job could you guys never work? Oh, I already know. I technically think it's something to do with bins or something. I was, oh my God, babe, I can never be a bin man. Oh my God. That's how you know it. You can never be a bin man. You can never be a bin man. get paid, dosh though. Nah, fam, they're all slinging me off the back of that lorry every morning. Do you know what I know? There's a bin man that died because he got ran over because he fell off the back of the truck. What would you say to your grandkids? Listen, I'm not going to be hanging off the back of a of a van. A bin lorry. Stopping in every estate, chucking bins in. Shout out to them though. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, we can't do what you're doing. Shout out to y'all. Yeah. What job Just could I not smell. do? The, pe- the people that um, work in the morgues, I can't, can't be them. I feel like I'd be okay around yeah. dead bodies. Oh, no, I don't think I could do that. No, Customer do service, I can't do it anymore. I, I think <laughs> that like so long. It's so yeah. interesting because you have a really interesting experience in med school because when you start med school, mm-hmm. from very first year, like a group of six of us are assigned a body of somebody who died recently. Shit! And we basically spend a year dissecting the body from head to toe, learning about anatomy. So we can learn anatomy but like so you like we spend like four hours a week in the anatomy lab just dissecting someone's granddad and shout out to john john Ah! no at the end of my second year they we give the body back to the family they bury them i went to the funeral it was amazing but that's how we learn anatomy so like i i could be that body could be that's really that's really nice like (laughs) obviously i've heard about it um back then when they had to learn about human bodies you know the the guy with five arms. Yeah, I, I did that part, but I didn't know it was actually like, this is what people mm. do. They call it the, yeah. you said the vi- viva? Crazy. What you call uh, it? There's, we have like vivas, that's like exams, but that's just the anatomy lab. Job. Like, so yeah. Trinity College has a room in the science building where mm-hmm. there's literally just dead bodies in there for the medical students. That's crazy. I feel yeah. like pe- but people donate their bodies to the science. science. We don't mm. take these bodies. We don't. Of course, they're going to say. That's the most we leave here. So you guys know. Me and you in Chicor from the cemetery. Consensual, so no, consensual. since you mentioned Trinity, let's actually dive into how you became a doctor. Like this, mm, this yeah. is yeah, this mm. is interesting for all the little girls out there who want to know. Um, I don't really feel like there's like one straight pathway for anybody because like being in the field, I know so many people who got in from so many different ways. But for me, it was straight from secondary school, mm-hmm. which was partially on purpose and partially by accidents mm-hmm. because. My mom is a doctor, so obviously okay. I have some points of reference. Like I kind of knew that that was a career option. Mm. Um, but funnily enough, I wanted to go to art school. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I didn't think that I would get the points for medicine. Mm-hmm. So I basically did my leave insert, filled out my CAO, and I got the points. And mm-hmm. it just kind of happened na- the way it was meant to happen. You did know? you have to do, what's that thing called? The, the HPAT. HPAT, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You have to do the HPAT. And it's kind of like, it's like an, it's like an, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's just a random test. Yeah. Mm. yeah. They just need to give like another level for you to do before you get in. Mm-hmm. I would say that if you really want to go to med school, you need to talk to somebody who is in med, med school, school or has been to med school mm-hmm. on a personal level because it's not kind of random. You kind of have to know that you want to do it. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't 100% sure, but I was kind of split. So I was kind of putting my a little bit of my interest in both pathways, keeping yeah. in, keeping both options open. But usually you have to be really really strict right um there are people who don't do it straight from secondary school they go to college and then they do it postgraduate mm-hmm. mm-hmm. where you can basically do another four or five years on top of whatever college course you've done mm-hmm. then you have to do another exam called the MCash, mm-hmm. and then you do med school mm-hmm. and honestly i think if you don't drop out in the first two years of med school you'll finish <laughs> how yes. long have you were you in college for oh my god i was in college for five years but usually it's six usually it's six years okay i yeah. felt like i was there with her yeah Fair. Bro. well it's not like you don't spend it's not like we go into like lectures and we're just sat around in college all day like other than the first <coughs> first half the second half you're basically in hospitals the whole time okay which is great yeah and how did you know like so did you like how did you know you want to do gynecology yeah that's a really good question because people ask me that sometimes and I just say like I don't know I didn't know I wanted to do gynecology but I knew I was passionate about women's health okay I fair. feel like that's what I've always been interested in and I wanted to be in women's health some way or some like because like women's health is everybody knows what women's health is but people when you ask them what is women's health crickets they're like mm. oh maybe pregnancy or like maybe yeah. you know 
like contraception and that kind of stuff but women's health is actually really really diverse okay you know it's everything from fertility to pelvic surgery to mm. you know like it's it's vast <laughs> yeah which, which section were you more intrigued by i'm um, definitely my main area of interest is pelvic surgery mm. but fertility is also really really interesting it's yeah, it that's also ties into women's health mm -hmm. and then in general it's all about like advocating for women i work in a women led field mm -hmm. so like a lot of the people i work with are women all of my patients are women mm -hmm. a lot of the midwives i work with the nurses i work with are women so i feel like it's very like it's a really empowering space to work in as well i'd I say so great. yeah, yeah no nah. love it i remember one time <laughs> because obviously Roz is like my friend right so i was in a situation i was in the situation someone i was seeing right <laughs> and you know we was you know kicking it you know researching and stuff like that you do when you're, you know, you do it and stuff like that and obviously we were also um waved so <laughs> <laughs> so when you're waved right the senses aren't really like connecting too tough so obviously i was like let's jump straight into this one um straight in no kissing position. yeah this okay. one position i was like let's jump in do this one and then obviously Usually I can I could take that position like a champ if I'm <laughs> focused, if I'm sober. Mm. But <laughs> I, I let this. things get out <laughs> a little bit. Sure, yeah. And you know oh, the partner was he, he had hit the wrong spot, right? And I was in excruciating pain. In like you know when you finish you know when you're you're running mm -hmm. and you get a cramp. You get mm. a stitch. But the cramp the stitch was like and you can't move. Right? The stitch felt like it was in my ovaries. And it was Damn. just it just kept on like Gunning at me, I was like, "So mind you, he's there. He obviously you gave me some privacy. Like, what can he do? You know what, <laughs> what, <he's like? laughs> what can he do? I say he was loving his life. Yeah, oh, he, was like, he, he was like, like, he was like, he was like, what can he do? No, like, I think it was most like, oh my gosh, because I'm just a girl. You should get me. Um, so yes, yeah, so I was just like. Uh, in pain and whatnot so obviously he's just there paracetamol and water in a blanket thank you so much babe and i was i called ross mind you i'm like literally naked i called ross i was like ross i'm in so much pain so no. and he's like don't worry she was like noise i'm gonna put naomi on the phone i'm gonna get naomi just call naomi i was like okay why did i not go a and e anyways no but my apparently, first response is always call naomi <laughs> like That's i just knew much. i didn't want to go a and e because like obviously i've heard like Obviously, it's always, hey, look, if you're in pain, please go any regardless. But you obviously hear that you're there for hours. And, like, yeah. I felt like as a black person, I could wait this pain out. But mm. let's just get some, you know, <laughs> medical advice. Yeah. <laughs> so I called Naomi. Well, I called Naomi. I was like, no, we're in pretty much pain here. She's like, okay, Demi. So you can go A&E. Or, like, you can just, you know, you can wait it out. But this is what's wrong with you. Da -da -da. I don't really remember because I was smiling. I still waved. <laughs> 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 she, she told me exactly, like, what was wrong with me and stuff like that. So I was like, okay. Regardless of everything she told me, I still had to wait out the pain anyway. So I How long did out. you wait it out? Oh, I felt like forever, like two hours or something. It was so painful. It was so painful. Yeah. Um, it's pretty wild. Like, I feel like <sighs> it's, it's a shame that you're, you're worried about going to A&E when you're mm -hmm. in pain. Because people right. come to the A&E with bullshit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> I mean, one of the most common things we do in the A&E is, like, get things out of people's vaginas that oh, people, wow. like, put up there. What's the strangest thing you've seen you up there? got to drop oh, that. easily, easily. Well, like, it's not the strangest so thing strange. I've seen in someone's vagina, but it's the strangest reason it was in her vagina. It was a ping pong ball. Okay. And apparently, she was trying to... <laughs> yeah. Apparently, she was 18-year-old girl. She was trying to see if she could Eight shoot eight. it across the room with her vagina. Was she, who was she, hey. was she by herself? <laughs> by herself, experimenting hey, her body it. and Sorry. her life. <laughs> Sorry. I Sorry. Know, maybe if you were your babes, you still want to stop what, what research what? is. You're just <laughs> trying it out. Like, She's just trying to shoot a ball across the room. No, but I can see I why she wanted to do that, though. I mean, like... Not that I'll do it, but I can see why she... But, read that? <laughs> Damn me. <laughs> no, Re, listen to me. I will never participate in that kind of shit because, first of all, no, I'm, I don't know. No, listen to me. Guys. You, go, you go, you go. I can see why she did it. I yeah. can see why she did it. No, yeah. I can't see obviously, why she did it. I have to be that instigator. That, okay. Okay. I can't I see. Never, obviously, I can. Yeah. She, know, wanted to know doing she, it. she wanted to know the strengths of her coochie. Right. Exactly. She wanted to know yeah. the strength of her coochie. Do some Kegel like exercises, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough one because like, it makes me like, like, Isn't that not how Kegel exercises are done? You put like balls in there people and you squeeze. Like, people you use like, the yoni egg and stuff like that. Like It's different if you're using like a yoni egg and you put up there. I mean, I don't advise that at your own risk. The ping pong ball, the problem was that obviously you're not going to shoot it across the room. Your pussy is not a cannon. Mm. <laughs> Number two. Bop, 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 bop. Ping pong balls are small and they're slippery. So once it got up there, every time she was trying to reach it, it kept just spinning in her vagina. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
Jesus. Yes. That's crazy. So that is so yeah. funny. And she waited till the next day to come in as well. So this oh was like gosh. day old ping pong ball, but it was fine. Oh. And those kind of moments, you just kind of educate. Because <laughs> somebody who probably, no, and it's funny, but in reality, this is just a young girl who doesn't understand her yeah. body. You don't know if she has a mother at home. You don't know if she has a big sister. You don't know if right. she has anybody Fair. who's telling her about her body. Mm -hmm. Probably just reading shit online, you know? So right. at the end of the day, sometimes in our role, you're the big sister. You're the mm. auntie. You're the mother. Mm. You have to let these girls know this is what is what. Mm -hmm. I think there was one time you told me that every girl should know what their vagina looks like. Mm. Sit in front of a mirror. S squat on a mirror. Look yeah. at your vagina. Looked at her today. She's yeah. looking good. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's looking, looking all right. She's looking great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's looking top tier. I, no, I think it's important you do those things. Yeah. Because yeah, so I remember you, talking to you on the yeah. phone. You said that, you know, there might be stuff there that you're not aware about. So just always take a look at it all take the a time. Look. Yeah. And then if something is up, you have an itch, you have a rash, you have a weird smell, you know what your vagina looks like. Mm -hmm. So you know if something is off. off yeah, because yeah. I was even thinking, I was like, if she stuck a ping pong ball up there, the yeast infection. Yeah. The oh. And me, Reed, that's why I'm not doing that. Yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> exactly. that's you know, I think, do you know I'm what? Something as well that irritates me that guys don't understand what? how girls can actually just catch Anything. shit from nothing. Right. Your pH has gone off. Mm -hmm. There's BV. Mm -hmm. There's yeast infections. Right. There's UTIs. Right. I'm the queen of catching UTIs. Right. Ask me where I get them from. Always remember to pee after research. Right. Always remember. <laughs> I remember I was actually talking to this guy of recent and he said the best thing. Because usually, I, I like, because of a podcast, I ask guys questions, right? So the question, one of the questions I usually ask is, when you finish peeing, do you, like, what do you do? Do you use tissue? They're like, no, I just shake. And that still baffles me till this day. Like, most of the guys I say that, ask, do that, right? But this one guy, this one out of the 10, said, I, I shake and I also use tissue. Because he watched one TikTok and he was like, the guy in the TikTok was saying, basically, obviously, pee has pH in it and he didn't want to just fling that into a woman, Right? Mm. Did he not eat? No, he's lying. He's not. No, he's yes. not lying. Really, he's, he's not lying. lying. He's lying. How is he lying? He's what lying. That's just so. Like I would have believed it mm -hmm. up until he said, "Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to ruin a woman's pH." No, no, like, he didn't say that. Oh, okay, sorry. He didn't say that. He, he, yeah, yeah. No, he. Well, no, to be honest, he's still a guy. So you know what I mean. Yeah. He said he watched a TikTok, and the TikTok told him mm. he didn't say that sentence. He didn't say that sentence to me. He said he watched a TikTok. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like, urine is acidic. Right. And the vagina is acidic, and mm -hmm. the vagina is acidic. It's the same reason why if you wear black undies, mm -hmm. after a while you'll notice that there's kind of like a bleach stain mm -hmm. in the center yeah. of it. Girls will be like, "What the hell is this? Your vagina is acidic, mm -hmm. so it's going to bleach black underwear if you've mm -hmm. had it on for a long time." Doesn't mean anything's wrong with your body. Mm -hmm. It's meant to be that way. That's why th things like douching, mm -hmm. those things are less acidic than your vagina. So mm -hmm. you're just gonna mess up your pH by douching and mm -hmm. putting stuff in your vagina. You don't need any of that. Mm -hmm. Just don't be sleeping with dirty men. Right. If you go to a guy's house and his shower gel is CN, don't Shit. do it. <laughs> Yo, I hope you have don't your notes. Only. We're yeah, going to be out to my Avino babies. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to leave all, all them, these um, trips, the tick, tricks and ticks. <laughs> Avino is wild. Avino is expensive. You know, this economic crisis. So you know, I Avino. actually ask guys like, "What do you shower with?" It's my favorite. I love asking all these questions. My ex used to do those two for one shower gel things. Oh, head and shoulders. It wasn't even. It was like I'm pretty sure it was like little. It was that little body wash. That's mm -hmm. what they be getting. Oh, it's terrible. Uh, uh, uh. What is um? What is the correct correct? What's the correct way to clean your coochie? The correct way to clean your well, if you have sex, you just pee after sex, mm -hmm. and if you, you know, can, they be like cuddling and stuff, and y'all be forgetting. Don't do it. Yeah, don't don't fall for it. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi's like, and next. <laughs> do you know how many times this babe has had to write me a prescription? Yeah. Do you know how many? So, <laughs> well, the thing is that, like, if let's say your partner has like bacteria on his penis, mm -hmm. and you guys have sex. You want to keep that bacteria away from your urethra, which mm -hmm. is the tube that goes into your bladder. So you pee. So it washes all the bacteria away, mm -hmm. prevents you from getting a UTI. Um, and usually this might be TMI. I don't know how deep Go your on. podcast Girl, goes. do you know to hear my story? Girl, we <laughs> told them we <laughs> have a gynecologist. You should kind of like try to get out as much of the stuff as you can from your... Um, oh, no, but the pull and pray. Huh? People well, are if you're pulling pull and, and praying, then you're fine. But if you're ski, <laughs> oh, <laughs> release the load if you're from your system. The load and you're being free with all that, you know, you should try and get as much of that out as possible. Scary. And yeah, drink your water. Mm. 
if you're worried about like strange discharge, put a panty liner down and keep track of it. Like mm. be aware of your body. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the letter here because you mm. need to know what your body is when it's normal so you can know when something's off. Mm. You know, also a disclaimer for girls who haven't had sex yet and think you can't catch any of these. Yes, you can. Oh, the first time I had a UTI, I didn't even know what knacking was. Mm. I, it woke me up from sleep. Damn. Like mm. I was literally at home in my mom's house asleep and I was like, why is my vagina burning? Mm. Went to go pee and the smell of fish. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I thought I was dying. I went down to my mom and you know, yeah. have a religious mom. She's mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, baby, just drink some cranberry juice some water. No, oh I God. needed, I needed Wake antibiotics. Up. Damn. Yeah. 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 And that was before I knew what knacking was. Yeah. So don't think you're off limits, babe. People are just putting it's... ping pong balls up there just, Can you imagine? just for fun. Like. I, forgot, I didn't you know? have a ping pong ball, though. That was yeah. cool. But girls get UTIs. It's really, really common. Mm. Like, really ridiculously common. Yeah. The female urethra is this long, mm -hmm. and then the male urethra is literally what, however long their penis is. So right. they have a lot more space. Mm -hmm. Well, some do. So does that mean, like, <laughs> UTIs are more painful for men then? Because it goes um, all the way through. They barely get them. Men rarely get UTIs. In fact, Crazy. one of the if a man is getting UTIs recurrently, he needs to go get his prostate looked at because mm. it's that uncommon for men to get urine infections Damn. when they're young. When older men have a whole different set of problems, but mm. young men, <laughs> honestly, we better get, get into urine those. Infections. Yeah, okay. that's, that's a pain. I wish they knew. I wish they knew the pain of a yeast infection. I wish they knew that. <sighs> You've just picked up on that. <laughs> joking, just kidding, just kidding. That was a joke. It's so funny, but girls be coming to the clinic all the time. Do I have a yeast infection? Any girl who's come to the clinic and asks me, do I have a yeast infection? My response is, but you know you have a yeast infection. <laughs> <laughs> the itch is different. Someone said, like, on if you're Twitter, suspecting it, you probably do. The itch do. is different. Someone said, um, what's the, someone tweeted, like a woman tweeted, what's the first signs of pregnancy? And someone quoted it saying, this is the first sign of pregnancy. You asking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you asking? When I was exactly. in secondary school, my biology teacher said your boobs will be the first things to tell you. Um, I think a lot of people's first symptom is nausea. Nausea? That's usually what we hear. Nausea. Mm. Wait, babe. Are these cryptic pregnancies a real thing? Because I've heard of two people from Carlo who had cryptic pregnancies. Like, mm. they literally had her baby shower for her after her baby was here because she didn't realize she was having the baby until she was actually in the hospital. And was That's she scary. like... Obtuse? Do you know a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> the, the maddest thing about her, Bench. right, was that Bench. she had a boyfriend, mm -hmm. but then she recently discovered that she was actually more into women. Oh. So by the time she had discovered she was fully into women, she had the girlfriend, but obviously cryptic pregnancy. She mm -hmm. didn't know. So she was in a full blown lesbian relationship. Mm -hmm. When she went into the hospital, That's she rough. was like, crazy. she thought, girl, this story was crazy. So she went into the hospital thinking that like it was her period or something. And they were like, no, we see a head, you pregnant. Damn. But she was a little bit on the thicker side, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't have even thought she was that thick mm -hmm. for her to have not noticed babies. But like, I'm seeing yeah. a lot of TikToks it's, about it's them. Like, I mean, cryptic pregnancy is something that kind of divides my <coughs> field because mm -hmm. some people believe in it, some people don't. I don't really believe in cryptic pregnancies. Mm -hmm. I think cryptic pregnancy is just another form of concealed pregnancy. Mm -hmm. The reality is that there's a lot of reasons why a woman might not want to accept the fact that she's pregnant. Mm. And it goes deep into psychology, social circumstances, financial circumstances. I've had girls come to the ED and be like, oh, I think I might be pregnant. They're 36 weeks pregnant. You mm. have symptoms. You can feel that baby <laughs> kicking. <laughs> Because of a 36 weeks pregnant, I had to say. Production, I, I hope you're getting her face because she's yeah. like, can't give me up. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> tough be going down. We'd be having chats. I mean, I had this one girl come in. She was 21. She'd been living her life just partying. She told me she was just literally in Ayanapa with the girls drinking mm -hmm. the weekend before and she had a positive pregnancy test. Mm -hmm. She was 26 weeks pregnant and, you know, she was crying. What am I going to do? Like, because obviously, once it's beyond 12 weeks, you can't, no option to get a termination anymore. Mm -hmm. And at that point, Shove it. I shut the door, I put the ultrasound probe down, I cross my legs and I say, girl, <laughs> let's be real. <laughs> let's be real. Let's be, let's be effing known. for real. Mm -hmm. And within about five minutes, it comes out. My mother, mom is going to kick me out. Mm -hmm. my, my boyfriend isn't serious. He's not going to help me. My mm -hmm. friends are going to shun me. I'm going to lose this. I'm going to lose that. Like, it's usually denial mm -hmm. mixed with just not wanting to accept the reality. And right. That person sounds like they were concealing that pregnancy because they had a girlfriend. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Because I remember when I found out about it, it was literally on Instagram. It was a baby shower had mm. happened, yeah. but the baby had a rove. 
<laughs> the baby was there <laughs> when they had the baby. She was broke. If you have, if, there's no way you, you have invitation. a baby that is kicking the hell out of you from the inside. Like, mm. I mean, anybody who's been pregnant, you know that those babies can kick. Mm. They can mm. kick. They're strong. You feel the movements. You have the symptoms. Your period not coming for eight months. What girl is not going to mm. keep her period not coming for nine months? But some okay. of these people say they get their periods. You can have like a right. little bit of bleeding, but it won't be like a normal a period normal every period. single month. Yeah. You might have like some people have irregular periods. So they might not know necessarily mm -hmm. when their period goes off. It might take them a little longer to realize it. That's mm. fine. So it, what you're saying is making sense. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Liz, gosh. that's absolutely true. Because I'm seeing here being like yeah. 36 weeks pregnant, bro. Like, could you imagine? Yeah. Like, being like, you're basically, like, it's been eight months. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have a question, actually. Sorry. Oh. How many months are in pregnancy? Okay, so it's a bit tricky because people usually say nine months, but it's actually closer to 10. ten. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, because I know I can tell my mom. Sorry. Yeah. Because she's like, there's only nine months of pregnancy. Me and her have had this, we've been having this debate, yeah. guys, right? <laughs> been having this debate. And she turns around and she's like, no, no, it's only nine months. I said, yeah. no, 40 weeks? So it's like 10 months. 10 months. Yeah. She's like, no, 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 no. Me and her, like, beef, like, to the point we were beefing. Yeah. Yes. We actually had a fight. We had to had to walk out of the room. We had to go and make up. <laughs> yeah. Like, listen. The reason what it is. we say nine months is because the average pregnancy is nine months. Mm. Some women obviously have their babies a little bit earlier. Some women go a little bit later. But most average pregnancies are around nine months. But mm -hmm. yeah, if you're lucky, you get to be pregnant for 10. And no. you're waddling into my clinic. Look. <laughs> Look. Oh, okay. I, had, I have a tweet of the week before we jump into the stories. Mm. So tweet of the week, guys. Some guy said, just to emphasis, it was a man that said this. Um, why Ross... American, why raw sex gotta come with kids? Why can't it come with fries and a cold drink? And I just found this tweet so funny because this is how men think. If you're raw dogging, <laughs> just go, like just take your consequences, yeah. and you, you don't deserve a drink or mm. fries mm. or a snack afterwards. <laughs> Because you're carrying on. Right. He deserves to be snipped. <laughs> yeah. <Number one>. <laughs> <laughs> they need to go. He don't deserve. Do you it. think right? women have all right this is obviously yeah right but let's talk about it though women have to be obviously more cautious people have to be cautious in general with who they sleep with because if you're doing you know the unprotected thing you might end up with kids so do you feel like women and men should go in to research with the, with something with something behind their head behind their head gosh in the back of their mind saying that okay if i was to sleep with this person i would have kids then that's okay what do you guys think of that? I just said. 110 percent That should be it. Yeah, that was that that actually, yeah. that exactly. really should be I it. I agreed with my statement before yeah. I said okay. it. Okay. Yeah. I'll be honest, I think that women need to think harder about these and things. Yes, yeah. I just because wanted to make sure men are it accountable was interesting. too. Interesting, I saw a tweet about like similar to this as well. And mm -hmm. A woman was basically being like, okay, guys will come out and be like, I want five kids, I want mm. six kids. And for them, that's just an orgasm. If you mm. think about it, the only thing a man has to do to have a child is have one orgasm. Mm. A Damn. woman has to carry a baby for 10 months. Right. Ch just change her body for the rest of Without her life. Without having an orgasm. Go yeah. through the labor. <laughs> Go through the okay. labor. Yeah, some of them ain't even had one orgasm. Damn. Her left leg didn't even shake a <laughs> little bit. You kill me, bro. Sorry. The toes me. didn't even curl. <laughs> once. <laughs> no, it's true. Do you see that movie? The guy was in there, guys, for five seconds, two pumps. Pregnancy. Yeah. It happens. She was like this. It's rude and disrespectful. It happens. It happens. But it happens, you know? So, like, the reality is that there's a lot more that a woman has to do in order mm -hmm. to have a child. So, I think that women need to really think. Anytime you're having unprotected sex as a woman, you're running the risk of being pregnant. So, you should be willing to accept that reality. Mm -hmm. If you don't think that, if you think a child would ruin your life, you should not be having unprotected right. sex. We'll stop. Mm -hmm. Fair. That's just it, you know? And if you think a baby won't, then go ahead. Then go ahead. Go ahead. If your parents are supportive. Then, then also think again that there's cost of living crisis. <laughs> Freeze, that's Freeze's catchphrase. Cost, cost of living. You, you know, know the vibes. vibes. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I actually saw a mad on the internet? Apparently, <laughs> Ireland is one of the top five richest countries in the world. Yeah, yeah. apparently. Yeah. That's what they're doing. That's taxes. what they're literally saying at the moment, that Ireland is one of the top richest countries in the world. I don't blame And I said, no, I don't when are it. taxes 40%? Why won't the country be rich? Why won't they be rich? Exactly. Like, mm. how much we pay for rent? We're millionaires oh. somewhere. Oh, gosh. No, we're millionaires somewhere. Right. Actually, I need to use that because <laughs> how do we looking on daft every day? And I'm like, do you know what? Like, you're literally getting a gaff that was actually probably worth like 900 euro. Mm. And you're, it's 
being banged out for 1900 yeah. do you know what i mean i stopped looking at houses it's my crazy heart can't take it like dubai yeah I, I just Wild. i just put a pause on you're that. telling me i'm going out to navin right mm -hmm. gas for like 1800 euros in navin do you guys know how to get to navin Mm -hmm. just, like mm -hmm. once upon a time i lived in navin do you get me <laughs> but what's in navin do you recommend mm -hmm. fuck off do you get me what's in navin but you're paying 1850 for a gaff mm. for an apartment it's not even a house guys yeah an apartment it's, it's gone mad like it's really insane right now so crazy um expensive. to go back to the female talking um i wanted us to talk a little bit about geriatric pregnancies because it's like we've we've spoken quite a lot about like younger women getting pregnant but it's like now with the way the generation is going in the economic climates mm -hmm. a lot of people can't afford these babies in their 20s anymore and women mm -hmm. are becoming a lot more like career orientated so it's like important for i think women to know the their possibilities of having kids once mm -hmm. they are yeah. in their 30s absolutely absolutely i i feel like every woman who knows that they want to have kids if you are 35 or approaching 35 you need to really have a serious conversation with yourself mm. because it's difficult to explain because I have to get into statistics, which is never as fun. But Go like, I mean, for it. Ah, no. From the they time need you, on this you're part. going from 35 to 40, I mean, the ratio of miscarriage in the first trimester is approaching 50%. Mm. Damn. That means that half, every single time you get pregnant, you have a 50-50 chance that that pregnancy is going to be a miscarriage. Oh. As opposed to 13% for somebody who's like 19 to 25. Like, it's mm. a massive jump. And it only goes up. Once you're 55, 90% of your pregnancies will end in miscarriage. Yeah. A lot of women don't know this. That's nine zero. Mm. And that doesn't mean stop your whole life and have a baby, but think about your options. It's mm. kind of cool because it's, there's a lot more options becoming available to women. Like mm -hmm. there are egg freezing, embryo freezing opportunities out there. In fact, I made the headlines a couple of years ago. Google, mm -hmm. the company Google, was making it free for any of their female employees to freeze their eggs. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, in, in in my job, someone wow. like a woman, like it has nothing to do with like egg freezing, but like my job actually helped uh, the, one of the companies in it helped a woman like with IVF. Like she was trying by herself for so long and it didn't work. And like to actually get that, like, you know what I mean? Working in like big corporate jobs sometimes, like mm -hmm. there is actually yeah. a, a big benefit, like because 100%. like being blessed with a child, because I know Naomi, you said there that there's all these like avenues, but those costs, like it costs money, money, like money. Do you know what I mean. Like and it's like, not. Yeah. And gynecologists have been campaigning for years, and only recently, and a lot of people don't know about this. So if you're out there, you're having fertility problems. Mm -hmm. IVF has recently become available on the HSE, mm -hmm. but you have to have diagnosed infertility. So you have to have at least two years of trying, met certain criteria, been linked in with your doctor, all those things. It's amazing but though. It is available now. You'll get one good session. That's ish. Like it's not as many rounds as people really should have like you're talking about hse would sponsor one or two rounds of ivf like mm. so people need six seven rounds to have success but Jesus. it is available it's, and it's not costing thousands and thousands of euro you will be on the waiting list for a long time so if you're interested probably consider it earlier than later but like, like i said ireland tries to take care of women i think mm -hmm. ireland is probably one of the better countries mm -hmm. in the world for trying to take care of its female population so yeah, I think we're lucky. I have yeah. a question. Yeah. This is a conversation for the girls, actually, because it has been, like, brought up in other conversations. Mm -hmm. Taking, <coughs> you know, STI tests during relationships. Huh. Or nay. Do it. You I'm mean, shocked I'm how many here. of these men are out here cheating and you find out. I know someone who found out their partner was cheating because she caught chlamydia, but she hadn't oh, been with anyone else. Yeah, Damn. Talking about yeah. yeah. I think yeah. if you have nothing to hide, just right. do it. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, communicate with your partner first before yeah. doing it. Because and don't make it into an argument either. Yeah. Like, do I don't, mean? Even, don't even communicate. Just go and do it. Women do it. You be yeah, shocked so, what you find. Sometimes, though, if you're in a relationship, sometimes like it might like make your partner overthink but you see like, the reason why i say that is because i think every single person is responsible for your own sexual health yeah okay. you Fair. are so it's like you shouldn't have to consult someone else for you to get checked mm. i agree 100%. so it's like you're not you're not even doing it for them you're doing mm. it for yourself to oh, know you're not doing it for yourself but just let your partner know hey look i'm going fuck him you there's no need with, you can come with me fuck him you was but, gonna do it regardless like regardless of what they say mm. but let them know because at least they can't say you didn't communicate to me hey i said it 
Yeah. But see, the thing is, I'd only have to communicate with with you if I come back and find out there's there's something yeah. wrong. Like, but you right. can get them online. You can get them for free. You can. Mm-hmm. Like your your man doesn't have twenty percent shares in your palm. Right. At the end of the day, <laughs> you have to look after That's your true. own body. You're dropping hey, bars she, today, no, babe. You have to look after your own body. She's so true. why are you asking? Would you ask his permission if he needs to go get a blood test to mm-hmm. check if you're anemic? Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. What does that have to do with you? We I don't think I don't think you need to ask for permission. Sorry, Demi. No, sure. But I don't think you have to ask for permission. But having that conversation, do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because at the end of the day, like if you're in if you're in a, a, a relationship mm-hmm. and you just come one of the days like if your partner just sees that there's an STI uh, pack <laughs> on the t- kitchen table first of all <laughs> first yeah. of all yeah, yeah. they're literally like what have you been doing Do you right. know what I mean? and then you're yeah. sure being like well mm-hmm. actually I think that you were doing it so now right. you are fighting because all mm-hmm. you wanted to do was just to make sure that you were you were right. clean down there yeah. Do you know what yeah. I, mean? I think having that conversation first of all just yeah, to be like look I just think it's something that we should do yeah. mm-hmm. you don't have to do it but yeah. I'm doing it yeah. do you know what I mean mm-hmm. we can talk about it again if you need to but mm-hmm. this is where I'm standing I 100% right. agree because at the core of it if you're wanting to do an STI test when you're in a relationship you need mm-hmm. to address the fact that you don't trust your partner because mm-hmm. I mean ultimately you're feeling insecure mm-hmm. that they might be cheating that's why mm-hmm. you want to do that test mm-hmm. so maybe just you know deal with that no, yeah. um, also yeah. can we I know you were talking about like the home screening because I remember you telling me one time the difference between like a home screening and actually going into the clinic and going pause, to, I was literally was that what you were going to do I was going to talk about the sensitivity thing you were talking about but yeah, yeah go ahead yes. yeah um, I, I try not to keep things too sciencey, but like go on, give us science. different tests. <laughs> there's different ways you can grade tests, and one mm-hmm. of the ways that we do it scientifically is something we call specificity mm-hmm. or sensitivity. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so specificity is basically how likely is this test mm-hmm. to detect a specific condition. Mm-hmm. And usually, if you're sending out a home test kit, it's mm-hmm. highly specific. Like mm-hmm. they're trying to pick up whether you have this one, that one, mm-hmm. whatever. Like they wanted to be able to catch that. Right. But mm-hmm. the sensitivity is like what's the likelihood that you actually do this thing properly you know like so like for example a lot of people will get a home test and mm-hmm. they'll grab the swab and they'll stick it up there do like this and then stick it and send it mm-hmm. if you come into the clinic mm-hmm. we will put a speculum round uh, can i tell you something that, sh- open that, that shit look like a beak of a bird <laughs> a pelican <laughs> you know, it's so funny because me and my friends we sometimes joke that we're like galileo because mm-hmm. we just be looking at <laughs> 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 No, I seriously. was so shy, like I was just like this at the end. You ever go to yeah. a guy's house with a person, you sit on the bed, edge of the bed like that? That's, <laughs> yeah. that's how I was. It's just, so so funny that women so find funny. it so weird so to go awkward. to a doctor and open your legs, yeah. but you're really able to that's, open it wide for a nigga. That shop was in there open. for two seconds, but you allowed it in there for how many seconds? Yeah. Exactly. How many, how many men they how had how many their many panties? Minutes? There's so many funny things people do when they come to a gynecologist. They oh my gosh, actually, share. they'll be like, "Oh my god, I sorry, I didn't shave." <laughs> do I do I care? <laughs> do you think that you're gonna pay me an extra euro an hour because the pull comb is hairy? No, yeah, that's I'm not crying. gonna happen. So like, I mean, like in the clinic, we would put in a speculum, we'd properly visualize the cervix, and mm-hmm. we would do something called an endocervical swab, mm-hmm. a high vaginal swab, and mm-hmm. a low vaginal swab. Right. We're not missing anything. They said cl- no crumbs. Do you know, so like, there's no crumb. Nothing's mm-hmm. getting left. So like. It's much more of a thorough test mm-hmm. to go into clinic and have the test mm-hmm. done. So I would say that if you have a negative home test and you're still suspicious mm-hmm. and it's something that's keeping you up at night, you know, just go get a, clinic, a proper yeah. clinic test. Mm-hmm. I was like, the doctor and the nurses both do it, don't yeah, they? Yeah, exactly. And they're lovely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go to Dongo. <laughs> it's you know been 14 what? years. You know what? I was only thinking about this because he only posted up a picture the other day, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's been I 14 years. I, I, I piled up for his birthday. And yeah. I was like, he said it. I was like, Naomi, go get checked. hasn't gotten tested since. In 13 years. 14 years now. 14 years. Now, 14 years. Last year this thing is fresh. He said it's 14 years. <laughs> so if you're listening, please go. Don't go. <laughs> go listen, I'm praying. Please run. <laughs> <laughs> but on, on, the, on the topic of, uh, of men, what do you think about <laughs> male contraception? I'm all for it. I love the idea of male contraception and it already exists, which is Mm. the crazy part. People, the male pill is out there. Mm. It's not stocked in pharmacies because the demand isn't there. (laughs) Men don't want contraception. They want women to take contraception. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. because they're like, I don't don't want to alternate And you know what? (laughs) It's so funny because we're the ones with the limited eggs. They're the ones with the lifetime supply, but they don't want to. Unless you do vape. Selfish. (laughs) Selfish. You know, you vape, take testosterone, smoke weed, Mm -hmm. drink too much alcohol. Mm. You're overweight. There are a lot of things that can affect male fertility. Crazy. But 
I'm here for the women, so yeah, yeah exactly. Like, did you take the pill? Did you? <laughs> did you, did you, did you? <laughs> I love that to me. Girl, I would love to see the day one girl that stood outside the, the pharmacy in the morning with their man being Literally, like, that's that's the pill. Pill. Yeah. That's exactly. Can I have the, um, his and her pills, please? <laughs> no, that's double hey. protection, mm. guys. Let's band together. Business plan, his and her pills. Oh. What are you saying? Yeah. yeah. You heard it first, copyright pay. Copyright pay. But well, you know what? Yeah, it's like a bottle and they pour up shots before they have sex and it's like. Bleh. Yeah. No, Girl. I was thinking like the actual tablets thing, right? And it yeah. has his and hers, blue and pink. <laughs> I like, love it. We could have we could have different we could have no different more. different. When you're different going drops. to bed, that's it. You just literally pop it out. Here's a sachet. Here's yours, babe. Here's mine. Together. Yeah, Are you ready? Go, yeah. There One, you go. Two, three. three. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, um, I actually looked up while we were talking about the whole um in infertility thing and like mm -hmm. IVF, I actually went onto my health insurance app oh. to go see what covers I have. Mm -hmm. So it says for family be benefit. Infertility benefit, I have no cover. Infertility initial consultation, I have no cover. But first steps fertility package, I have 50% of costs up to 2,000 euro per year. That's good. So I was like, whatever that means, I have half price. I like I like the sound of that. <laughs> um, it says for fertility counseling, full cover for five visits for presenting issues, for mental well-being and support programs, fertility preservation, 1,000 euro per lifetime for egg freezing, 1,000 euro per lifetime for embryo freezing, and 150 euro per lifetime for sperm freezing. So I could get my eggs frozen right now. Yeah. Damn. And ladies, Yo, freeze your eggs. Don't, don't like, because there is an option to have your egg mixed with your partner's sperm and then freeze it as an embryo mm. they store better as embryos they're basically little babies ready to go just pop them in the oven kind of thing but be sure you like that man because <laughs> if in a couple of years you want to have a kid you're going to be stuck with like you're, you're mm. like if that's your ex of three years you're going to have to have his child Damn. if you want to have a child Ooh, child so Imagine. freeze your eggs ladies crazy and then the last one is 50 percent of cost up to 2500 euro per lifetime for pre-implantation genetic testing mm. It's really good. Yeah. What insurance is that? I'm Leia, baby. Mm. Leia. Yeah. The your I job don't like you. <laughs> Girl, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm telling you now. Yeah. My, my, my cover doesn't have that. Really? I, I no, because I, a month, but I don't have all that. So no. It's true. I don't even, uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm an Irish life. And my it, workplace pays it. It comes out my, I don't know how it works. I'm like the worst adult ever. But shall I have a, Irish life? Mm. In, um, we have the option of VHI and Leia at work mm -hmm. and like you can go in and pick what package from the option so mm -hmm. I think there's like four options so that was the one I picked I didn't even know that came with it that's, that's, really, I sat really, down that's there. really good hey, yeah. they do like two for one friend two for one <laughs> can, your friend can, can my friend come in do you know what if I claim you as a daughter yeah because it covers Ooh. my whole family yeah Ooh. yeah if I claim you as a daughter <laughs> do blood ties let's, let's, let's work on it let's work on yeah. it babe so it's like nice. <laughs> I think you even told me mm -hmm. that it was better for women to freeze their eggs while they were still in their 20s. Yes. Than when they're in their 30s. So I'm 20. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's because <laughs> of egg quality. Mm. Like the quality of your eggs changes over time. So basically, a woman is born with every single egg she's going to have in her entire life. In mm -hmm. fact, by the time you're born, you actually have less eggs than you originally had. Mm. The most mm. amount of eggs you'll ever have is when you're 20 weeks pregnant in your mother's belly. Crazy. Yeah. From there, it's basically like this. Downhole. It's just a downfall. Yeah. And then by the time you're born, you're exp every time you take a flight, every time you have an x-ray, every time you go through security in a club or an airport, your body is exposed to radiation. So all of those eggs that you have in your body your whole life are just being radiated constantly. So by the time you're 40, but, but, but. those <coughs> eggs have been through it. Those Some eggs, they, they've been through they're, it. They're fried. And they're fried, and they're not the best quality eggs. And all your best quality eggs, you flush them down the toilet with your period for 30, 40 years. Nah, I mean, just, just saying. Obviously, I'm not being too serious. But like generally, yeah. mm -hmm. your best quality eggs are in your 20s. Mm, so if you, know. you can freeze eggs from your 20s and have them when you're 40, 42, and you want to have IVF, like you significantly increase your chances of having a successful pregnancy massively. I'm in my last year, my 20s. Maybe that's what I got to do. Yeah. <laughs> I saw my cover. It covers, it covers me for a lifetime. I'll be sat right next to you in that clinic. Stories. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's go to the stories. I've got, I've got two mm. crazy ones. So I'll give you the option of which I should start first. Post-pregnancy research gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Oh, I had to donate my kidney to my wife and I found out a secret. 
Post pregnancy gone the wrong. First one, please. Oh, okay. Well, let the guests. Oh yeah, sorry, Naomi. Yeah. That no, one? are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> me and Debbie said that one. Well, that's <laughs> one that's good, yeah. This one is short and sweet, but it's 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 a little bit gross. A little bit mm. gruesome. So if you're soft, block your ears. <laughs> okay. So <PCG> post pregnancy <laughs> research gone wrong. I've never told anyone this, but I can't hold it in anymore. Oh. After my husband and I had our youngest, I was extremely horny but only about three weeks post-pregnancy. We decided to take it from the back, assuming it would be the safest. I blindfolded silly, him silly, because- silly. <laughs> I mean, out of all positions, where this one is at diagonally. You're doing 90 degree like, I'm angle. I'm still in recovery, yeah, so you can clear me from the back. Right she now. said, take it from the back, take it from the back. Gosh. I blindfolded him because my boobs were super leaky and it just wasn't a pretty sight. We did the thing, had an amazing session, then I stood up and a huge blood clot fell out onto his chest. He asked what it was. Why? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Wait, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> He's doing it from the back. No, yeah, I think she got, fall on his chest? she got up. Oh, she, but she, she said but she got no, up. She said she got up. But they're doing it from the back. How does it land on his chest? I don't know. Maybe they were cuddling or something. You know, she didn't pee after knocking. That's what the problem was. She got comfortable. <laughs> she didn't pee and research. She, didn't do she got research comfortable and got cuddled up. I stood up and a huge blood clot fell out onto his chest. Blood clot. He asked what it was, and in my panic, I said, "Sorry, it's just jello." The <laughs> the breastfeeding <laughs> feeding makes me super hungry. I said, "Don't move. I'll go grab a quick washcloth." I came back in the room, and he was gagging, saying the jello didn't taste very nice. <laughs> oh gosh! He had grabbed it off his chest and eaten it. Like just threw it back and swallowed the whole thing. I didn't have the heart to tell him what he ate that day. That's would that's you want to know or not? <laughs> Damn. I can't even laugh at that. I can't that's even laugh. Nasty. I'm not gonna lie. That First of all. Do you know what? Like it's shaking, guys. <laughs> oh, my body is actually convulsing. Like I'm like, what? Uh, that that, that, so that's a so lot disgusting. to take in. First of all, your man is a but little like, slow. Do, do you drop like blood clots like that after having yeah, a kid? Yeah. Yeah. Let's be FFR. What blood clot looks like jello? What bamba clots? <laughs> you <laughs> blindfolded, babe. She said she blindfolded him. But even the way, you know how jelly feels on yeah. your skin. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Yeah, how Think do you know what like, jelly feels on your skin, Demi? No, know. but like you know how it feels like in your, <laughs> your mouth. <laughs> like you just know how these things feel. Like you grow up. Like she get me. Like a kid could be blindfolded and can tell you what flipping water is and what jelly is. Or I what, don't know like, why he just didn't take the blindfold off is, after she got yeah, up. Like you get me. Um, it's mm. an, it's an, a very strange story. Um, first things <laughs> first, you shouldn't be having sex until six weeks postnatal. So that's why, why she took that? it from the back. So basically, like a lot of people think it's because of stitches. Not every woman has stitches and we still give the same advice. No sex for six weeks It's because the lining of your womb is extremely vulnerable to infection. It's not oh. just no sex. Don't put anything in your vagina. Don't give anything the opportunity to carry bacteria from the outside up into your womb that just had a baby in it. You're very high risk for something called endometriosis, which is basically an infection of the lining of your womb. And there's massive blood vessels in your womb. So an infection in your womb can become sepsis really, really quickly. Damn. So there's actually a real reason why we give that advice, even though most people don't listen to it. Mm. Um, it's because it doesn't come with this explanation. Mm. You heard well, it here first, guys. They just say don't have sex. And it just makes people want to have sex. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but one thing we work with a lot is like a lot of the patients we meet, like we're having an intelligent conversation here. Like mm. I'm talking to people that might not have the same educational background mm. as some of the people on the table. So the way I can explain things to you, sometimes I have to break it down a little bit more for some sure. patients, you know? Mm. But yeah, she messed up with that one. You can 100% pass a clot. You can bleed for up to three weeks after having a baby. Um, shouldn't be bleeding that much, but you can. And yeah, Blood she shouldn't clot. be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Blood clot. And your man is a bit slow too. So slow. And he was blindfolded, the poor guy. That's what he gets for making her go out at three weeks after giving birth to a child. Yeah. You when he that. held it in his hand, did he not feel that it's not jelly? What I How don't understand he... is why you just say, let me it's just taste so that. Oh. Exactly. Someone <laughs> dropped food on you. The, the, 
like it's so gross but but if you were at home at it why are you eating mm. jello and that's why? what i thought i was where, like that where was did the jello come, come from, from? Why, like, why unless why you it? love jello exactly why is it in the room because it should yeah. be in the fridge yeah like, like, to answer her question don't tell him shit sis <laughs> keep no, it to yourself because he clearly couldn't handle it if you didn't no. say it yeah. straight up so just don't say it i just don't know why she didn't like just say the honest truth. But like, like, when he wants that, that makes your baby daddy. No, nah, there's vexed. too much cap in this story. I won't lie to you because I agree. he goes to the bathroom. He washes his face. Do you know no, what I mean? he didn't go to the bathroom. She said she quickly went to go get a washcloth to clean it. But his no, mouth would have been. Yeah, bloody. but when he ate it, when she came back, when he ate it, like it, 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 I don't know. Do you get me? Maybe well, she she's like, sorry, let me wipe your face. I'd be like, what the hell? You didn't wipe my face yeah. for it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Oh. No, I just cannot even right now with that. <laughs> like I, I feel like girls know what a blood clot looks like. Blood clot. I feel like guys have almost like when do you guys really see like a proper? They wouldn't. Blood? Right. Like, they yeah. wouldn't know what they look like because we see them our periods all the time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, crazy. Right. The next story. So this is the one where his wife needed a kidney, mm-hmm. and then he got tested, and he hasn't told her what he found out. So. It starts off by saying, I decided to get tested to see if I could donate my kidney to what my wife of six years. We have two <laughs> kids together. My wife got sick just after our son was born and is now in need of a kidney transplant. We checked with her relatives and none were a match or a viable donor. Last week, I got tested. I knew it would be a long shot, so I decided to get tested to see if I could donate. I got a call the other day saying that I was a match. The doctor then said something about wanting to do additional testing due to some information from the HLA tissue test results. I didn't think too much of it and agreed. Then the results came in and I was shocked and confused. He explained that because of how DNA information is passed down through generations, a parent to a child could have at least a 50% match. Siblings could have a zero to 100% match. It was rare to have a high match as husband and wife. Long story short, we're related. (laughs) I was put up for adoption before I was born, placed into a family that moved across the country. Mm-hmm. I knew I was adopted, but we didn't have any information about my bio family. It was a closed adoption. The way my adoption worked was my bio mom gave birth to me and I was checked out. They never met my bio mom in person. I was born in a hospital an hour away from where my wife was born. They had kids. They have kids. And they're, the kids are fine. So. <laughs> <coughs> I read a little further. (laughs) See the doctor in here. (laughs) I read a little further. So it's their half siblings. They have the same mom, but not the same dad. Okay. Do you know what? That's my biggest fear. Really? Yeah. Cut it. That's a. That's my. No. They've been married for six years and two kids. Their kids are basically siblings and cousins. So wait, (laughs) I have a question for you guys. Yeah, are you staying or leaving? I'm gone. How crazy is that? The love of your life. Same mom is crazy. The love of your life. (laughs) Right, over life. You're, 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 you're on. You're on your. You're on the third kid, right? And that's how you find out, or your second kid. Sorry, and you, you know, realize the love of your life is actually. I your, understand your that I'm on this sibling. podcast, yeah, but I'm gonna say something quick. Alu abomination. <laughs> well, lie, it's not no, happening. like I don't think it's not happening. I'd stay, but see, if I have to be, be married, I just be like, oh, like you know, I just have lots of brothers and sisters. No, personally, <laughs> personally, I'm not staying. Sorry, I'm not. I'm, I'm not gone. Gonna, I get home. You're, you've always been like a brother to me. <laughs> so this look, he makes sense. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Yeah, that minute, my will never get wet for him ever. No, again. Yeah. There's, there's no point in staying. It's so no. Gross. Somebody has to take the kids. <laughs> so, somebody has to take. I'm the kids. not sitting with you. Yeah, listen. We don't have to tell them, but one of us has to exit. Because mm. I'm not trying to explain to my kids right. that, oh, sorry, your husband's actually your uncle. Damn. It's not going for me. I'm just not doing it. <laughs> so you go yeah. or I go the and someone starts a new family. Yeah. Because you're best to... from scratch. I'm <laughs> starting from scratch. And the kids yeah. are young, so they can actually still can, get away with it. Adapt. Yeah, They can adapt. Like, the kids will probably be fine. Like, a lot of people talk about being inbred. Um, it takes several generations of incest to have, like, genetic yeah, that's issues what was, that's what i was trying to um and they're okay because they're only half siblings anyway yeah. mm. and it's interesting enough because in the medical field we use the phrase consanguinity to describe basically incest mm-hmm. and in the past it was actually really common in ireland mm. because oh. people had really lived in really small towns and mm-hmm. communities scattered all over the country and like Technically, if you were looking for like a girlfriend or a partner, you mm-hmm. wanted to get married, you might go to the next town over mm-hmm. or like whatever, but you wouldn't go that far. Mm-hmm. And like realistically, 
everybody in that town was maybe only one or two generations separated from being like Makes related. Mm. So that's the reason why things like cystic fibrosis are so common in Ireland. Because mm. these are genetic conditions that are passed down from people who were like inbred. Ooh. Um, it's kind of difficult to explain really mm -hmm. without getting too into genetics. Yeah. But like, yeah, it, 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 it can be an it issue in, still in certain communities in Ireland. I remember yeah. um, I was reading, I don't know where I was anyways on social media. And there was this like family, I think in Europe, and like they didn't want like their title to go out. They wanted it to be in house. Like they wanted their, yeah. what's called, I forgot the word. They wanted to shout, keep themselves in their they castle. They wanted to keep the hierarchy. Yeah. yeah, the hierarchy. They didn't want it to be exposed to any other people or whatnot. Jesus. And they just kept on, kept on, kept on, in, you know, very doing with each other. And then the kids started end up with like no ears. You know, they started like lacking like Deficiency. limbs, yeah. limbs like. And height, yeah. eyes was funny, chin was mad, <laughs> head shaped crazy, yeah. like cr cr mad. I right, said, so wow, lips mad, crazy. That's yeah, right. it's it's weird. Mm -hmm. it's I personally crazy. think I'd, 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 that marriage would be done. No, the marriage has thing. to be done, but so does the family, bro. Like, it's actually done. <laughs> no, it does. Those are brothers and sisters. No, Those it's actually have to done. Go. No, we don't. It's crazy. It is. It's crazy. You're crazy. actually ruining your kid's life because you, yeah. you actually have to sit down to him and say, mm. I messed up. And now, and now, you didn't like, know though. Now, Did you, you, you didn't up? know, but still, like, it doesn't matter, right? You like, if you as a child know that your mom and dad are related, mm -hmm. you're 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 fucked yeah, up. Fucked like, up. You're, yeah. you're, you're you can never let like, anyone ever know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't. Why? Why does your mom and dad look so alike? Damn. Yeah. Why are you? Well, you know, like, there be couples that be looking alike though. Sometimes. Yeah, don't and yeah. just tell them never to do ancestry DNA. <laughs> oh my god, that is true. That imagine? is so so true. But you know what? Yeah, I think that. Now, I think that people need to really be honest with themselves because mm -hmm. I know way back when we were kids, yeah, some people used to be a little too close to their cousins. Mm. Now, I'm not saying... <laughs> <laughs> Someone <laughs> went ish. <laughs> I love to speak your truth, Naomi. Let it out. <laughs> some of y'all were a little too close to your cousins. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, she um, called out everybody now. <laughs> I'm not calling out everybody. I just mean that, like, I feel like it's an issue that like, I feel like it's not talked about enough in society. Obviously mm -hmm. it's something I've experienced, but like there are people who are actually attracted to people they are related to. I mm, mean like first cousin it. marriages is not that strange. In mm. certain parts of the world, it's actually really common. It's very common. If you go to India, yeah. certain parts of the world, it's yeah, actually it's really down. common. Yeah. Mm. And it's because of proximity. Mm. You see this person how every, every fucking day, mm -hmm. like they come to every family garden, they come to every family party, you spend time with them. But Find like, a different party. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what? You see the way I'm squeezing face, I say, yeah. ew. Sorry, go on. It's, it's not just about morality. There is a genuine reason why you, sh you should keep it out the family. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. That's nasty. Yeah. Preach. Anyways, I was um, somewhere, right? Ooh. And when I'm there sometimes, I get, you know, in ideas. Right? What are you on a so basically, <laughs> oh god, there we go. Oh god, you don't know what's coming after that story. <laughs> you know, it's Demi. Yeah, <laughs> so like, so basically, right? In that time, I was like, oh my gosh, let's just bring it up on the podcast and see how they take it. So I think emojis, are some emojis are masculine and some emojis are feminine. I read it. Right. So let's say, for example, the emoji, any emoji, like you see the emoji with the teardrop from his eyes, mm -hmm. like it's smiling. That's that's a masculine. That's a man. That's a masculine emoji. I think usually emojis with hearts on them. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> emojis with hearts on them, mostly feminine emoji emojis. But yeah, what do you guys think? Like, we can even go into flags. I think some flags are feminine <laughs> and masculine. No, let's just stick with the emojis. <laughs> yeah, we'll go <laughs> one. Me and Naomi just looked at each other and went. <laughs> we don't have to tap in, but I just thought, like, you know, this shit would be quite nice, you know what I mean, no. to talk about. I just think, I think there's emojis, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Girls can, like, girls can use it to men and women, right? Mm -hmm. Men can use emojis to women. Mm -hmm. But it's when they start using it to men. Oh. Do you get me? Like, yeah. like do no, if you were like, together, together <laughs> like, if you were together, that's fine. Do you know what I mean? Like, in a relationship, yeah. but like a platonic friendship. <laughs> Example. Why are you sending our like? Why are you I sending our eyes? Yeah. You get me? An each example other. to back, back Reed's point. So let's say I'm a guy, you're a guy, right? And like, obviously, we said we we're gonna meet up to watch this game okay. in the bar. Yeah, or like you're late, right? <laughs> right. I couldn't imagine guys doing that. Actually, this I can't imagine guys doing that. <laughs> this is so funny. So I'm like, bro, where you at with the sweaty gamochi? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I feel like the guys this time. Like, how would you feel? Okay, it's a question for you, girls. How would you feel if you checked your man's phone randomly sometime and you're expecting like, okay, like he's talking to girls. I'm gonna find evidence, and all you find is him sending his boys. You know that emoji with like the eyes, the doe eyes. 
Oh, yes. Imagine your man is sending the doe eye emoji to other. I'm used to. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm no, no hate. I know all my best friends are gay men, but like, imagine he's sending like proper doe eye emojis to his man and being like, "Guys, miss you." I'm punching walls. <laughs> the first thing first I'm doing is screenshot and then sending it to him and be like, Naomi, what do you think? <laughs> Gosh. You know that's the first thing I would that's do. That's the first thing you do. I get that screenshot quick. But generally, what would be your response? So since you're saying that some emojis are more feminine, more masculine. N- no, like obviously I'd ask him, like, why do you do that? <laughs> like, what's, what's this? Like, what's going on? Like, you know what I mean? No, and I'm not insinuating anything. Yeah. But why, where did you pick this up from? <laughs> What, what, who taught you, know, you how to use that? Who taught you how to do? Who taught you how that to, come from? Yeah, Literally, fair. you know what I mean. Yeah, but yeah. Going back to the medical thing, I actually have something that I saw on Instagram recently, and it's like I said, since we have a doctor here, let's mm-hmm. let's talk about the BBL epidemic. Mm. What is your thoughts on BBLs? For real, it's it's really tough to say because I mean, plastic surgery has been around for a really long time, and the BBL is just the most recent form of plastic surgery. If you're Talking about safety, I mean, obviously it's not safe, mm-hmm. um, but there are a lot of surgeries that aren't safe. The people have them all the time. I don't mm-hmm. necessarily think that a BBL is better or worse than any other type of plastic surgery. I think it just has a certain, it's topical. Mm. It's topical in our community. It's topical in our circles. I think that I personally wouldn't get a BBL because there are massive risks. Mm-hmm. Like any, any procedure where you're having fat taken away from your body, that's can. That's mm-hmm. grand. Liposuction, take the fat away. That's mm-hmm. fine. It's when the fat is being put back in. You need to be really, really careful. One of the biggest risks is that the fat can make its way into a blood vessel. Mm-hmm. Like they can inject it into the wrong place. And if fat makes it into your blood vessels, goes into your heart, goes into your brain, that, that's a stroke. That's a heart attack. Mm-hmm. You know. So that's how people die on the table, having mm-hmm. BBLs. These are the things that can happen. Um, I feel like in general, women just need to learn how to love their bodies a little bit more. Mm. But what I find more interesting is the skinny BBLs. Mm. Because I feel like they're taking over. I don't even know the difference between... What's the difference between a normal BBL and a skinny BBL? A A, a skinny Mm. BBL is a a bitch that looks anorexic till she turns around. And it's like, boom. Like, it's Mm. not no longer about being like stack, stack, curvy, curvy, curvy. Mm. They want that like... You know that Kendall Jenner skinniness? They want their cake and yeah. they want to but eat it. Well, it. You know? There's some skinny BBLs that I think they're nice. They're just like, they're not over the top. They're just yeah. like a little bit. Like, but it's, you know what it is? It's not, it's never even about the BBL. It's about the sides. Yeah. Mm. Just add something to the sides, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you've got to blend. you got to blend. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the, the weights, problem. The, it's the like, ass and the tie. Yeah, you need the sides. Yeah, and like, that's all you need. It's be kind off. of crazy because, okay, cool, you left. Fair enough, you've healed. Your body is healed now. You've left the place, but do you not see the thighs? Like, do they not see? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, but see, when they're see? leaving, they tend to be swollen, and you're wearing all those compression garments. No, after so, that, Rose. After so, but, that. So, but that, at that point, the damage has already been done. Go back yeah. and now, I even, I even had another question. Which is worse, the BBL or the ass shots? Have you seen that thing now where people mm-hmm. are sticking filler into their thighs and their asses? Yeah. To me, that's scary a little. I mean, it depends. It's not like the filler that was back in the day where people used to go and like somebody would inject like Cardi like, B and Nicki Minaj filler. Ass. Cement. Like, yeah. Back yeah. Do you know days, that's what yeah, happened to shit. this um, musician? The the girl K Michelle. She did a whole documentary on it because like after she had her ass shots done, they weren't able to get all the stuff that was now attached to. Is it like her muscles, muscles and stuff? Like, she can't get rid of it. Like she's lumpy shaped for life cement yeah. cement it's like, because in the past some of the chemicals they were injecting was not safe to be inside of the human body it was basically reacting with your body and causing problems um i mean like there are certain types of shots that they're doing now that are basically it's a bit like botox it's like plumping shots okay you have to go to keep getting it topped up because it'll kind of be flushed out of your system after a while like those kind of stuff are harmless enough but i mean any source of whether it's a breast implant or it's a butt implant or whatever you're putting in your body, just make sure you know what you're doing. But yeah, a bit wild. I have a flashback from Holly and Jordy Shore where her boob implant flipped and she was like literally on camera trying to like turn it back. Yes. Yeah, sure. Like yeah, it was yeah. really weird. And it's like, I've also heard this like rumor sometimes that like BBLs that like your fat can migrate. Yes. I was actually about to mention that it can move around your body. So like certain people, depending on your genetics, fat is more likely to be in certain parts of your body. It's certain, like it's actually not your fault, ladies, that you have a fupa. It's just your genetics. Fat so is more fault. likely to go to your child. <laughs> it's your mom's fault. Go to your village, find your family shrine. <laughs> like, talk to them. Because, like, 
you might genetically be more likely to store fat in your thighs. Like me, I store all my fat in my lower body. It all goes down to my bottom half, chat. But some people, I'm <laughs> sorry, I apologize, but you store it in your belly. You Damn. store it in your arms. You right. store it in your... Yeah. That's just literally genetically where fat is more likely to be in your body. You have something called adipose cells, fat cells. They're more represented in certain parts of your body, depending on your genetic makeup, you know? So mm-hmm. you might want that fat to stay in your ass. Mm-hmm. It might make its way up to your belly. Mm-hmm. So... You never know. Never know. Imagine getting a BBL and it just moves all the way back. That's crazy. But like these these things have to be maintained. Mm. Nobody gets a BBL and they're like, right, off rest of your life to be a baddie. Yeah, you still have to go to the gym. <laughs> I think that's like the concept that yeah. like a lot of people have is that you go get these quick surgeries fix. and it's a mm-hmm. quick fix. Yeah. But you really do still need to be doing your squats, your sit ups, right. all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Crazy facts. I'm I'm here for women loving themselves. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And body positive. Yeah. And I am not anti cosmetic surgery. <coughs> if if my bank account was not saying what it was saying right now, mm-hmm. I, I'm not saying they see me in Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I said. <laughs> but <laughs> so I'm not saying you won't see me in Turkey. <laughs> we might look, are, we, are we working a Turkey holiday? <laughs> listen, listen, yeah, because I wanted to be at one point. Because I know, I just know, if I was to tap in, it wouldn't even... Really, you'll never be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Let me keep my, you guys fed. <laughs> I will make sure, even my guy friends, whatever footballer you want to meet, I got you. Because I know. I know. <laughs> if I, guys, I know. <laughs> well, I, my heart breaks for some girls. Yeah. Right. You, you ever seen some girls, and like, sorry, listen, yeah. Mm-hmm. Me, when I see a beautiful woman, it stops me in my tracks, right? Oh. <laughs> you're sat there, you're walking, you see her coming, she's coming, the walk is, the walk is giving the hips, I give you, I'm thinking, eh, hey, the back is going to be something Crazy. else. <laughs> And then she and passes. You're looking for it. And, and you're like, something else. <laughs> Where is it? Damn. Where is it? Mm. I it's actually like sad. those kind of, I like those kind of shapes, though. I'm not going to lie. They, it's they, like, you can see it from the front, but there's nothing in the back kind of thing. Yeah, like, there's still, there, there's something about them. Like, obviously, it's giving, like, you know, um, you know, the Roman Empire type of, like, the paintings. That's what, she get me? Those kind of, those are the, like, those are the bodies. Like when I was young, coming right? out of the shell and right. the ocean vibes. Exactly, because yeah. when I was young, bum wasn't a thing. It was curves. Yeah. It was literally curves. No. So maybe I'm still yeah. old school. That's the stuff that, like, you know, you know what I mean? All I know yeah. is that, like, I grew up with, you know, you know, because sure, you know my family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know that auntie that used to come every summer that nicknamed me, num- she said my body was shaped like the number one. Right. I got boobs now, auntie. No, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, this fine girl you see here was I used to. fine. I was flat like this Ross on was both just, sides. Ross was <laughs> lanky <laughs> AF. Like just tall, skinny, nothing in the Guys, front. Guys, I didn't wear a bra back. till I was like 17. She literally oh had God. no titties. Like I was such nowhere. a late. Where these came from, I don't know. We don't know mm. until that. Second puberty. You told me they real. came from um... contraception. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? It could have been. Yeah. So I was like, hey, what's that contraception? It could have been. Help on that I, think it's, I think it's a mixture of contraception and actual just weight gain of my metabolism slowing down as, yeah. as I got older. Sure. But yeah, like I was such a late developer. Like, you were you were like lanky up until like 17, 18, to be honest. Yeah. Really late. yeah. Sure, that, that's what, that was when I wore a bra. <laughs> um, how long is the vagina though? Uh, the average vagina is about five, six centimeters long. And that's then what short. private part from the male side would, do you think is perfect to fit in there? So, someone that's past 5'6"? Of course not. Or do, someone below 5'6"? I mean, the vagina is 5'6 centimeters, but, you know, it's stretchy. Mm. It's, you know, it has... Isn't it it's tr- elastic. You can only feel four <laughs> inches <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> take your that weak shit somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some of us don't like being hit in the cervix, yo. Bro. I mean, like, to be honest... If your guys talk about, um, I have 12 inches, that's mm-hmm. excessive. <laughs> you really don't need 12 inches. Take that one away. You know, if you want to be, if you want to be a big dick warrior, enjoy. You know, those I'll kind of guys, no one, no one's carry, saying on that. Those guys, I'm going to let you finish, sorry. Those kind yeah. of guys have to, have to actually carry lube in their back pocket. What do you mean? Step back. A hundred percent. Yeah. Menace to society. Get away. Yeah. And like, just because I do women's health doesn't mean I haven't had my own problems. There was one time <laughs> I had a vaginal tear. Those Let me tell you, yeah, there was this one dude. <laughs> I don't know. This is why I mean, I nice, stay away bro. from no. those guys who shower with CN. Mm. And they don't <laughs> moisturize their body. Because uh. let me just, do you, have you ever seen sandpaper? <laughs> <laughs> just, 
<laughs> oh. Just rub sandpaper against the table and you'll get to experience what I experienced that night, yeah? And so. then the next morning, I'm like wiping, I'm seeing blood, I'm seeing blood, I'm seeing blood. Guys, I went to the A&E, there was a two centimeter rip in my vagina from the friction. Guys. Do you know what two centimeters is? Like it's this. too much. Two, two centimeters too, too long. Much. Two centimeters too long. <laughs> Goodness me. So like really, uh, you, lube is a must. Oh. Bro, you said two centimeters there and i was just like the vagina just goes through a lot because <laughs> so i said much. for you to push a baby's head out has to be 10 centimeters <laughs> like that means like your hand can fully go up that right the cervix is 10 centimeters <laughs> a lot of people get mixed up with this the c- oh, okay. your cervix has to be 10 centimeters your vagina is like basically like a plastic band it'll just expand to get baby out and then it just pops back to its regular size <laughs> <laughs> y'all say y'all want twins I feel like there's so much stuff on the internet right now that I feel like is very like like I, I like the whole child free movement because mm-hmm. I get that like you know women were always being put under pressure to like not have children but I feel like there's actually so much anti-child propaganda on mm-hmm. the internet right now and it's like children are beautiful if you yeah. want them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I, I oh guys it will I'm at the stage where I like mining people's kids and giving them back. <laughs> yeah, giving them back. That's, still that's where I'm at. I know, like, one thing I am excited about in regards to having kids is because, glory be to God, I've put a lot of great people around me. So the aunties and uncles, yeah. like, are sick. Like, they're yeah. going to be It amazing. does take a village. It really like, does. Village. So, like, that's why I'm really confident. Obviously, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for the right time or whatever. But, yeah. you know. You know what's funny is that when I first started my job i actually didn't want kids when Mm. i was younger i didn't want kids it was only when i was like maybe like 25 26 i decided i wanted kids and it's because something that's one of my favorite parts about my job and it's no matter what i'm doing in the day it's one thing that always stops me in my tracks the moment a mother sees her baby for the first time Mm. that moment it's like the world stops the room stops you can just see it Mm. it's like a transformation it's like literally the definition of love at first sight Mm. and when you see that happen for other people you're like damn i kind of mm. want that for myself you know i right. want to have that feeling i mm. want to experience that yeah. i think it's beautiful and like even us like we see this every day i've delivered hundreds of babies mm-hmm. it's still i still get that feeling every time you know mm. so i think it's, it is a magical experience you actually have one of the best jobs in the world <laughs> like you actually bring children to life sometimes you know it, so that's a good day mm-hmm. you know sometimes there's dead babies and dead women and all oh. those sorts of things but i love when there's good days and like that's that. why i can't be a doctor <laughs> yeah. Because of that, yeah. I, I will go home crying. I know. Every day I'll be going home God. crying. Sometimes I do have a little a little tear in my car, but, you know, you come back next day. It's all I remember good, there was one time one really, really hit you. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. I remember. Mm. She, she, and because you can't also talk about some of this stuff, like, I'll just sometimes, uh, I'll be seeing her mood change. I'm like, right, work work was tough today. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It, it can be hard, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's about doing what you're passionate about. Mm. That's what it is. I mean, you guys are here doing what you're passionate about. Because okay, I Okay, yeah, on this couch, first... I thought you were talking about my real life job. <laughs> no, you're... Ross, re- forget about real life, Ross. about real life yeah. job. But what's so funny was I remember, like, a year ago. Mm-hmm. Like, it was more than a year ago. It was when she first came back from Are You The One. She mm-hmm. came back from the podcast, from the show. Mm-hmm. And this podcast was only really getting started. It was only really kicking off. And I remember mm-hmm. she was so stressed because, like... I hope you don't mind me talking mm-hmm. about this. But, like, she was so, like, I need to blow up from doing this show mm. i need to blow up from doing the show like this is gonna get me the platform it's gonna be so big like are you the one this is gonna take it all the way and i, oh, and I was like failure. what mm. if what's gonna build you what's gonna actually give you a platform is what you're doing right now mm-hmm. you know mm. and it's so crazy is because i feel like this podcast has given her and you guys the platform you guys never imagined it mm. would be for sure. in the beginning yeah. Bless. and it's not like five weeks in the beach in a bikini mm. as somebody was recording no but genuinely mm. it's like hard work hard work yeah, you know it. so and you know what i'd rather it be this than that mm-hmm. let me tell you now i'd yeah. rather yeah because i actually actually That's love all these people that are here every right. single guest my co-host yeah. that no. show we the we you were trifling <laughs> that's good no for real like oh my gosh naomi you were like so amazing and i learned so much and there's still Thank gonna you. be more to learn okay. girl you have um, to come back for a part two because yeah, people are gonna watch this and i think yeah. they're going to come with a lot more questions. Yeah, I think we even held back. We didn't even <laughs> we tap d- into what we really wanted to tap into, to be we honest. Do. Part two. We're going to yeah. do a part two. Well, you know, if there's tons of questions, yeah. health-related questions, I'll definitely come on. But, mm-hmm. you know, I really feel like, if anything else, I just love that women, mm-hmm. black women, 
white women, Irish women, mm-hmm. are just having these kind of conversations. These right. platforms exist because, mm-hmm. like, I know when I was a kid, mm-hmm. there was nowhere Nothing. You didn't know. that I could listen to conversations. You like, didn't know. Yeah. And I feel like in African households, the taboo, there's mm-hmm. a taboo when it comes to having these conversations about sex. Right. Like, yeah. I remember when I had the birds and the bees talk with my mom. It was me, literally. She tried to have the convo with me, mm-hmm. and she was trying to say stuff, and I was like, I already know what you're At talking about. At least you about. had and the I birds and the bees. Shoes. I'm still in the forest trying to figure that shit out. Like, yeah. <laughs> brother. Guys, my birds and bees was the day I got my period. My mom told me, now you are a woman. <laughs> Any Goodness business you me. have with a man, ruin you. <laughs> but, but she ain't though. I can't that imagine was her your mom saying it. Did she that lie? was her she exact she no And then she passed she me lie. a pad. And closed the door behind her, the, the bathroom door behind I'm her. I like, can I actually imagine your mom? I can imagine your mom. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Yeah. Oh my so god. No. So uh, that that's absolutely crazy, and it's like it's great to actually just see a black woman so passionate about like teaching us the, mm-hmm. these kind of things. Because as you said, I don't think any of us would have actually ever listened to anyone sit down and have the conversations that mm-hmm. we had today no. and be so vulnerable, mm-hmm. yeah. ladies. You was vulnerable today. No, we were. Yeah. We you was went, vulnerable yeah. today. You actually explained so much. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I think you know that when you, when you hear like a doctor's gonna come on, you think someone's somebody in a white like not to stereotype, <laughs> yeah, sorry not to stereotype, <laughs> someone in a white jacket is just gonna look at you like dead in the face and be like, just mm-hmm. have like a little bit of judgment. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it was nice like you like you really opened up. You like you mm-hmm. explained yeah. to us like we had a bit of banter. You yeah. know what I mean? So I hope anybody who's listening can sort of feel that as well. Like exactly. do you know what I mean? Like yeah. doctors aren't scary. Mm-hmm. And then also something else that I feel like I want to touch on a little bit with you before we like wrap it up is like, I know like you expressed to me the importance of finding a doctor who really, really cares about you. Mm-hmm. So guys, if you have one, hold on tight. And if you feel like you're not being listened to, leave. Leave. 100%. leave. 100%. I wish it was, this was a thing where you could choose your doctors because mm-hmm. you know the way I've been nominating your, like whenever Maybe people, doctor, though. when people tell me they have problems, I'm always like, she literally I would literally text everybody. her and be like, babe, do you mind having she a conversation with everybody. this person? Send yeah. me everybody. I know I'm happy to answer questions, not in my Instagram DM. But <laughs> like, you know, it's it's all good and people are informative. And mm-hmm. like as recently, there's somebody you sent to me recently and I was saying to her, I was saying, the only thing you can do mm-hmm. as a patient is advocate for yourself. Yeah. You sure. can't cure yourself. You can't prescribe for yourself. You can't diagnose Sick. yourself. Mm-hmm. But you can advocate for yourself. Mm-hmm. And if you feel like the person you're talking to is not listening to you, mm-hmm. move. Mm-hmm. Sure. Go to somebody else. Because that's all you can do, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm, I'm very appreciative that you are in my life. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? I will somehow... Um, Let's say pay for your services to food. That's what I do. <laughs> you know what? No, but honestly, we're jokes out, aside, drink. No, of course. But even jokes aside, like it's really important to have these people in your yeah, life that yeah. actually know stuff that yeah. you don't know. Because that day when I was on in his bed saying I'm about to, I feel like I'm about to die. Naomi was there. Do you get me? Like mm. I couldn't really call any of my other friends because what would they know? Yeah, yeah. 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 She so. like you and your mom are like such a blessing in my life. I'm mm-hmm. like you already know that we've been friends Girl, for too long. Don't do this to me. <laughs> we're not. We're not gonna cry. We're not gonna cry on camera. I told you about my period. I'll, yeah, I, I we're will, not. We're not cry, crying on camera. Now, but it's God. like if y'all have a doctor friend, mm-hmm. hold them close. Right. Hold yeah. them close. Like I'm ringing you, Naomi. I'm telling you, baby. You leave here. I slide you her number. Link below for my hotline. No, just. But Literally. yeah, no, that was such an enjoyable episode. I enjoyed yeah. that so much. Love it. Crazy. Thanks for having That's me, guys. That's my best friends, guys. I hope I, you guys have been watching bestie. this from behind the scenes for so long. So I'm so yeah. excited to be here. I love Thanks this. Thanks so much for yeah. coming. Come back as well. Yeah. Yeah. We're, We're being serious. Mm-hmm. Like, back. you have no choice. Yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in this week. Yeah. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Please comment, um, Ross Clark, crazy comments. Um, the information that I said will be in the description box will be in the description box. And see you next week for your weekly subscription to The Gist. Bye. Bye. Bye.